For many of you who are on a weight loss journey, do the following thing to dramatically improve your odds of success. Take your scale and hide it, put it in the closet or throw it away. Compulsively weighing yourself is probably hindering your progress. In fact, I did this with many clients. I had them stop weighing themselves and in fact, they became far more successful as a result. This uh, one, people are always like, huh? Whenever you bring this tip up, I can't help but remember how obsessed I was with the scale. I used to I used to weigh myself after every time I ate food. Oh, God, <laughs> me too. I, uh, For the opposite reasons, right? Yeah, yeah. Trying to gain like, like, ah, I know. I'm not getting and I, any and yeah, I, and I, I have weighed so, so consistently so many times that... I knew where I would be at what time of the day yeah. and after every meal. And like, and so, and I knew if it was like a success, like, Oh, whoa, I just hit a new, a new pound. Like, <laughs> I've never seen before on that meal, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then you go back and stuff myself. No, this one for, for clients, uh, I don't know after, after a few, after five or six years of training, I've, I've figured this out and I told clients to stop weighing themselves because mm -hmm. what happened was they became so obsessed with the scale that they would ignore all the other signs of potential progress, like how they felt and their strength and their energy. In fact, not only would they ignore those signs, but they would counter, they would go against those signs if the scale seemed to move in the right direction. Like for example, if they were more dehydrated that day or they had less carbohydrates, so the water, their mm. water went down. So they lost a pound or two on the scale, but they had muscle cramps and they felt terrible. They had low energy. They didn't have good strength. They would consider it a success. On the flip side, they would consider it a failure if the scale went up a pound even though they felt good and maybe it was muscle and maybe they got stronger. So I would tell people, let's take your scale, let's throw it in the closet, and let's not weigh you for 90 days. Mm -hmm. But here are the things I want you to focus on. I want you to focus on your energy, your strength, your mood, your sleep. Let's focus on those things. Let's pay attention to those. That way you can kind of monitor and see how you're progressing. And then you'll be in for a amazing surprise at the end of this, this 90 day journey. And it was like clockwork. It worked every single time. Yeah. I used to like, I used to weigh uh, some of my clients towards the end of my career and like wouldn't even tell them and like would just track it for them. Have them stand on the scale backwards. Yeah. So. yeah, like they wouldn't even see it. Um, and that worked out a lot better for me. But it was such like an obsession that uh, you'd have to overcome constantly because of everything I was describing in terms of the fluctuation of weight. It's just so many factors to that. Yeah. That it was like, I would rather focus just on, you know, the, the progress of strength, obviously, and like what we're doing physically and like um uh, how the clothes are fitting like circumference measurements i think are even more valuable yes. than that so things like that another great strategy is to uh get up on stage in front of all your peers and have somebody rip your shirt off <laughs> Take shirt. oh god <laughs> <laughs> who is that guy that that's, does that that's the new uh andy elliott phenomenon that's going so on so right terrible now. Dude. I, you know what okay here's the thing i'm gonna god, I'm, I I'm going I to call this dude i'm going to reserve judgment until i meet the guy because one thing i've learned in this space is that you know I, I can't i don't know somebody by a post or two or even their instagram if i go through their instagram like and many times i've misjudged or mischaracterized somebody who i think i'm not gonna like them and then i meet them and then sure. like oh, whatever yeah, he could be but, a great guy but that strategy is yeah, it's, so, it's, it's like humiliating <laughs> and it's just so not bad. it's counter it's gone it's going viral right now there's all kinds that's why of they're these, doing it yeah, yeah. It, exactly right well, there's these yeah. clips of i mean we've pretty much like uh, we're trying to eliminate all shame in the environment, like from every angle, right? Like that's like the mm -hmm. biggest push, like um, since the last like decade has been like to get rid of people like feeling any sort of shame. So it makes sense to me now that it's all of a sudden emerging again. That's why I thought you would like it. I thought you, cause you want to bring back shame and bullying. So well, I, did. <laughs> I, thought, I don't mean I like maybe Justin will like <laughs> Justin's like, yes, bring back yeah. some bullying. No. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. You need to be shamed. No, I, I think it, I think it's more of a peer to peer kind of like yeah. a self correction thing. Like the integration stuff that Jordan Peterson talks about. Out. Um, I think that all needs to be handled in the social setting as you're growing up together with your yeah. peers. Like it's just putting somebody on blast in front of like strangers in like ridiculing them and, and belittling them. Like that's the stuff we all were like, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, you know, like we're yeah. not, we're not on board with that. That being said, I do think to your point that 
we've gone so far the other direction that we could have easily predicted that this was going to happen. Yeah, the rea- the, the, the 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 pendulum swing is coming back hard. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. the the you know it's the only worse. Yeah, no shame and being politically correct. Everything's okay. Saying, Everything's fine. Yeah, and, like yes, right. Like uh, you know the health in every size, all that. So of course we went so far that way that there was going to be an opportunity for someone Dude. like this to go viral and be like, no, nah, fuck that. We're going the opposite way. Yeah. You're fat. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people are going to get emboldened to say racist things again, you know, like all this, because it's just been this constant, like trying to, to, to root out and scrub out and where it didn't even exist. And so it's like, now it's like, it, it almost puts like this, this counter movement, this rebellious movement against like this oppressive, like authoritarian, like, control of like, oh, well, control you. It's a, people will rebel against it's, that. It's not an effective strategy. It's human psychology. It's, uh, it's like bumper plates, uh, or not bumper plates. It's like the bumpers on a bowling alley. You ever go with your kids bowling, they throw the ball down, it goes bump, bump. It has to hit each side yeah. until it gets to the very end, right? Yeah. So it's like we go from one end to the other. I mean, human psychology, right? Like the scale thing that we just brought up. Like I would work with clients and the scale would determine their mood. They would in a, either a good mood or a bad mood. Yeah. It was a good day or a bad day based on what the scale said, and completely ignoring their energy and other things that actually contribute to their mood. Right. I would see people, I would have clients that would come in and I'd be like, oh man, you look you look great. You know, oh, I have so much energy. I had a great day. I feel so good. I can't wait to get on the scale to see how great my progress is. I know I'm getting more fit. We'd get on the scale and no pounds lost or it went up a little bit maybe because they built muscle. And you could see the energy in, in them just get sucked out or them just get just changes their entire mood because they tied everything to remember scale just weighs mass. So you could cut your leg off and your weight would go down. Would that be a successful weight loss? No. Um, Also, and we've talked about this so many times on the show, body fat and muscle look very different and are very different tissues. You, you gain 10 pounds of muscle, you lose 10 pounds of fat. You weigh the same on the scale, but you're smaller because fat takes up more space on a per pound basis. And you have a faster metabolism, you have better hormones, you're stronger, you're more sculpted. So uh, it's just human psychology is interesting. So understanding this about yourself, if your mood can be can be made or broken by your scale and you're trying to lose weight and you know that about yourself, you know that, that if no matter how you feel, no matter what's happening in the gym, if the scale goes in the wrong direction, it's going to crap you out all day long. And which then, of course, uh, contributes to other behaviors, right? Like overcorrection where now I'm going to starve myself even more. I'm going to go work out inappropriately, overtrain myself or whatever. If you know that your mood gets that strongly affected by your scale, take your scale and throw it away or hide it and make a deal with yourself. Make a promise that you can keep and say, I'm not going to weigh myself for 30 days or 60 days. And I'm just going to pay attention to these other things. And you'd be blown away. I wish body fat testing calipers were more accessible and easy for people because then they could just you know, electronic impedance you can get. It's not, it's just unfortunate because those get can fluctuate. Human, so human psychology is so interesting. Uh, you know, you could totally predict that this Andy Elliott guy would would manifest because of the direction we're going. Totally. It's like the Andrew Tate phenomenon. Yes, yes exactly. It's even like the Sam Solik phenomenon, right? Like we've overproduced, we over edited things yeah. on social media. Yeah. That was, and like it was like this slow progression, right? Like it started off and like it was people running around with these crappy cameras and it was shaky. Yeah. And then there was this demand for it to be better and more refined and better edited, better yep. shot, better production. Then all of a sudden it's like, man, some of these people, some of these vloggers are, are rivaling a documentary as far as like the quality of what they're putting out. And now we're coming all the way back the opposite direction. Uh-huh. It's like, give me the grainy, grungy, no clips edited type of editing anymore. It's like, it's so funny how we how we are as far as the human psychology is like that we we go one way and then we get right mm-hmm. till it's like okay that's enough now I want to go that's ridiculous. where's the novelty yeah, yeah, yeah now where's the novelty the opposite, complete not just like go back a little bit like oh let's just take it back a little bit it's like no let's go the opposite extreme mm-hmm. and then uh, you know here comes this new phenomenon which I think that's what we're seeing with the rip your shirt off thing. I think that's what we're seeing with Andrew Tate. You, you know, I think that's ex- what we're seeing with Sam Sola. You know, it's a good th- example of yeah. that is uh, even fashion. It's like that. Yes. I, I just thought about that right now because uh, I have a 15 year old daughter. <laughs> her and her friends go out and I swear to God, guys, it's the nineties. When I see them, the way that they're dressed, know, even yeah. their hair and their makeup is starting to look like, I'm like, do you baggy know? Baggy pants are back. Oh, I'm like, yeah. you look like literally like when I was in high school. 
It's so weird. And I wonder if it's because, I wonder if it's because they see pictures of their parents and then so it's in their head or if that's what I, I just like. Designers. It's like finally my kids are wearing like what I wear. Like we look like little twins <laughs> <laughs> for a brief moment, dude. Then they're like, dad's lame. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yes. No, your 90s. boys rolled up the trucky last time and they're like the baggy corduroy. I mean, like, that's what I wore in high school. Uh-huh. Totally. Like, that, like they rolled up in a fit. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I wore that exact fit. Dude, my yeah. daughter had the, she had the, she had the straight leg, big, Big jeans. She had the the shell toed Adidas on. And yeah. Did she really have the yeah, shell toes dude. out? Bro, oh, I'm funny. like, you look. I'm like, come on, that's honey. Awesome. This is crazy. This well, is you fun. know what's funny about that? I mean, God, talk about making yourself feel old now, right? Because it's 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 gone so long, or it's been so long ago for them that they're they don't. There's no recollection of that for no. them. So they think it's completely yeah. new and original. You know, so yeah. it's like, no, actually, that was. Well, when we were kids, it was a '70s stuff. Remember bell bottoms and low yeah, jeans yeah, yeah. starting to come out yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I know. I wonder. if Somebody's got to have like a good video on like. There's got to be a math to it. There's right. There's got to be math to it where it's like yeah. every. 20 years I wonder we, we reverse the same back. cycle yeah like yeah like, like is it is it pretty rinse repeat you know the same sort of there's cycle? Got, yeah is there a formula to it that like that we should be I, able to predict there should in be five an algorithm. years we exactly we should be able to go oh this is what will be popular yeah interesting it's I'm like, never the Jetsons yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? They, dude, this like, is why sci-fi futuristic... movies sci-fi movies always screw up on this. Yeah. You'll see a sci-fi movie, it shows the future. And it's always weird. Now, unless it's like 5,000 years in the future, but they'll show like, a, oh, it's like, you know, 100 years in the future. And they're wearing like, like aluminum. triangle, like <laughs> collars that are like this big. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, yeah. it's like, like steel gray, you yeah. know, onesies. Or everybody's or, wearing like alumi- aluminum that? foil <laughs> clothes or yeah. something like that. You're yeah. like, what, that's wow. big ass moon would, boots. Yeah, yeah, nobody would wear Although, that. I've yeah. seen that. By yeah. the way, did you guys? Who was it that yeah, brought Back it up? to the Future nailed that. Yeah, I mean, that, that Back to the Future nailed that. I wonder stuff. though. Hold on. I wonder if Back to the Future influenced fashion because it was such a cultural icon that movie. Yeah. Oh, Sometimes movies do that. I'm sure. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No. I mean, I, it was that who was it that brought up Idiocracy, yeah. where they were all wearing Crocs? That yeah, was me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah. Do you know I bought a pair? Yeah, I know you did. So yeah, did I. I. I have two pair. I, I bought a pair. Katrina's so mad at me. It's so funny. She's so That's mad a, at me. Is that a no sex day? Yeah, she's like, <laughs> she's like, don't you wear those anywhere. I was yeah, like, this is the know, new Jesus sandals. Bro, what got me, and I know, here, here's, you could go back on the podcast. I'm sure you hear me talk shit about them because they're the fucking ugliest thing ever. They are. And, and, yeah. I, and I am like the furthest. You know how much I resist trends? Like, yeah. I do not like to follow trends yeah. at all i hate that right yeah, so yeah. it's like so there's a part of me it's like oh it's everybody's doing somebody it. got you to put it. them on huh? well my my nephew who dude. wears the same size as i do had a pair and these are the ones i, I had literally the exact same pair i ended up going and do you buying. have the fur line ones yes or the regular? oh bro and we we're up at Truckee. <laughs> they're nice and i had to go take the trash out and i slid my feet in them and i went God damn, these are comfortable. Yeah, dude, they are. Yeah, and I find yeah, myself I wearing the them clothes, around the house right all the time. I, now. So I, I wear mine because we don't wear shoes in the house. So yeah. I use them to go in and out. Yeah, so that's when my, I go out. That's to my house, go to the trash. Go get around, around. So I bought a pair and I have them in the garage for when I go out in the garage and go out that way. And then I have it. I bought it. Just bought another yeah. pair for the front. So I have a pair in the front and back. That's my moccasin slippers that you guys always made fun of me, but. Uh, I ended up getting like cooler looking ones and then I, I wear them and I hate it because it's like it has a back to them and everything. And so you go to slide your feet in, and but then you get to down. like, yeah, it, I so half no, the time I'm no. like, I want no them down. effort. Not, I yeah. I'm like, I might as well look dorky. Here's why your moccasins aren't good. You go outside and walk on wet grass on those. You just screwed them up. No, the bottom's rubber. Bro, dude. the side of them is all like felt or whatever the hell that material is. <laughs> With 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 Crocs, I could go swimming in those things. Those, they're yeah, made they're, out of plastic. Yeah, no, so yeah. They, uh, they just, now, do you wear yours? Do you wear yours in sport mode, or do you keep the strap yeah, in the front there? Yeah. Always the strap front, because the yeah. whole purpose is what you said. <laughs> if I, you catch me wearing them in the back like that, now I'm not, now I'm bullshitting. Yeah, because who cares? I, that's not why I got them. I got them so, and I have a pair of Birkenstocks, which you'll never catch me wearing them out oh either. Oh my god, that I will but not the, do. But the one thing about yeah. my Birkenstocks is I actually sometimes because the leather. I don't even strap, know guys wore those. Yeah, yeah, of course. Birkenstocks. What? Of course. Like are you going with the sandals? sandals? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the, yeah. No, those the are the double thought, straps, I thought right? certain kinds of women wore those. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a certain kind of woman that <laughs> yeah, wears there is. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I'm wearing so Crocs, nice. what's it? I mean, if I'm Crocs or Birkenstocks, I mean, another one of them I'm bragging about, you know? <laughs> My point is, when I want them for the exact same thing, my hands are full. I'm carrying trash. I'm trying to go out the door, yeah, right? Slide your feet in them. So I want to be able to slide my feet in. And even Birkenstocks, the leather strap falls down sometimes. So sometimes I'm like messing with my foot to get in. So yeah, I want the, the easiest things to yeah. slide in and out and then as comfortable as I can be. Nothing beats Crocs for my that. My dad oh. years ago yeah, made the case. I hate to admit it. So this, my dad Man. made the case years ago when I was younger. He likes shoes without laces. So, and he'll wear like regular shoes, no laces, right? That you kind of slide on, but they kind of like tennis shoes. Yeah. 
And he found a pair years ago and he just bought like 15 of the same <laughs> pair because he just likes to wear them. And I remember him making the case. He's like, they're nice. You go, Salvatore, they're nice. There's no lace. You put them on. It's so easy. You go outside. And I was like, like who cares? Put them like, wear laces. They look ugly or whatever. Now, as I'm getting older, I'm kind of like, hey, what brand are those? Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like hey, my shoes. Yeah, does Velcro come back soon or what? Does, I sure. Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Pro, like, yeah. Pro Wings. Come, who owns we Pro Wings? Is Pro Wings trend. still a shoe brand? Oh, is by the way, style is a 20 year cycle. You is hit, that you hit the 20 year? Oh. Yeah, boom. Yeah, 20 years. Today's YouTube program giveaway is Maps Power Lift. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, one day left for trainers and coaches to get the new trainer course on the launch with the discount and all the freebies. Okay, so this course teaches trainers and coaches how to build their business, make more money, get clients better results. You won't find what's in our course in any other certification course anywhere. It's incredible. And because we're launching it, here's what you get if you sign up. MAPS Prime program thrown in. MAPS Prime Pro program thrown in. You get to attend a live virtual lead generation masterclass. You get all 11 MAPS mods workouts for free. All 13 MAPS guides for free. You get that $200 off discount. And you get put in a, a private group, a forum group for trainers and coaches. Okay, so if you're interested... Go to mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com. Use the code 200 off. Also, it's the last day. We got one day left for our workout program bundles. All of them are 300 to $350 off. Here they are. New to weightlifting bundle, body transformation bundle, new year extreme intensity bundle, and the body transformation bundle 2.0. If you're interested in any of those, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yeah, let's look at pro wings. Does that even exist? Yeah, that, I mean that, that was a brand. Is it still a see if if see if Pro Wings and BK Knights still exist? Oh, it looks like nice, they bro. still have them. Yeah, they Knight. do still have Pro Wings. Yeah, I always find this interesting Pull too. A picture of them, like a, like, a, a, like a company like that that you thought is just dissolved, but it's still probably is, worth a billion dollars. Yeah, right. Still, yeah, I don't know about that, but oh yeah, look at that. I don't even remember. Those you know what? Shoes. They don't look bad. I'm gonna bring those back. They don't look bad. You know, I thought you mean like oh, Red nice. Wings Velcro. was another one, right? All right now, are they, no. they, so does the business still exist? Maybe give me some stats on the business. I'm yeah, really interested. And, yeah, and if somebody else owes them or yeah. owns them, excuse mm. me. They're like work. Actually, so. those are a bad looking <laughs> no, right there. Uh, <laughs> also like, yeah. Pro <laughs> Wings don't look bad. Pro Wings were what oh, yeah, kids got when they couldn't afford, their yeah, parents couldn't yeah, afford Yeah, they were, the or, they were the cheap uh, shoes at, whatchamacallit? Wow, they don't look too cheap. Anymore. Look, at they, they look at the branding on it. They've changed the branding. Huh. Wow. Did, can you find some stats, Doug, on, on them for me to let me know if they're if the company is doing better or worse or what, what's everything sold out on their website? Oh. So that wow, doesn't, that really? Well, that, that doesn't necessarily mean a good thing, bro. <laughs> yeah. cool. Look up, look up the company. Okay, Andrew, yeah. maybe you can. Somebody give me somebody give me some stats on the company and how it, how it's done over the last decade. You know, it's interesting. There's been like, so Stussy made a massive comeback. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Champion, right? Champion was a Champion. Kmart brand what about before. LA, LA Gear, wasn't Yeah, that, that was the that cheap, brand? like, easy yes. brand. You found a gosh, Chuck. One of the and best Kmart. stories ever, man, watching them and Stussy both come back and make Let's a see. huge comeback. What's that say there? Pro Wings, what is that? That's just their Instagram page or something. Their okay. Facebook. Okay, so Pro Wings in the 80s in a shoe store, a uh, volume shoe store. Is this where they used to sell them, you I couldn't guess? couldn't find out how the business is doing today? Yeah, which, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for might not numbers. be a public company. What's going on over there, Andrew? No, you still should be able to Google that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Since 1989, huh? Yeah. That's, oh. Pro Wings is a part of Payless. Oh, so Payless, Payless owns the brand. That's oh, what I thought. I knew there it. There you go. Yeah, because then you knew, that's what. It, that's why what kids got made cheap. fun, because then you knew their mom bought their shoes at Payless, which no, back then sense. was- Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did not know yeah. that it was a, it was owned by them. That's yeah. really boy. I bet they they crushed it. Do you know what shoe it's that like I the, the Huffy bike? Of well, no, shoes. it's like the it's like <laughs> yeah. okay. So a lot of people don't know Dude, this Huffy bikes. Bro, Huffy was so, hey, so gonna, they weighed like eight thousand. Oh, I had a I couple I get just roasted. You know what this is like? This is actually just <laughs> like the supplement industry and the supplement hustle. So vitamin shop, Nutri shop, sell their own these brand. companies. The way they make massive money is by cutting by cutting down the price on the big name brands so they leverage big names so mm -hmm. like the EAS or the whatever whatever name your your mm -hmm. top brand they put it at really competitive prices inside their store to drive traffic in there so they're only making a couple bucks at best on that but then they offer their protein powder that uh -huh. where they have massive margins and they undercut the price in hopes that you'll end up buying their stuff pro wings is the same thing for payless so yeah. they have their they drive you in because you can go buy Nikes, mm -hmm. you can buy Reeboks, you can buy all anything at, at Payless, 
for a discounted price. Those will be like 10, 20 bucks cheaper. But then they'll have something. their shoes, the Pro Wings, for, ah, oh, wow, I did not. Pro Wings are the multiple meal. That's how the, the, the <laughs> 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 meal of Fruit Loops. Now I'm so curious to see if, if Payless is Fruitios. done really well or not. <laughs> <laughs> my mom used to buy ass bag. My mom was so when it came to cereal, she would buy us the kids cereal, but she never got the brand name. So we had um, instead of uh, <laughs> instead of what's the one with the marshmallows, uh, Lucky Charms. Yeah, we had marshmallow mateys. Yeah, yeah marshmallow mateys. Yeah. Yeah. it's a pirate. It's not a leprechaun. Too. It came in the big bag. It, it came in a bag. Bro. Yeah, it came in a big. It was bag. not a box. Yeah, it was just a bag of, of cereal. Oh, here, here we go. Good. Revenue is three billion. Pay less is though. Mm -hmm. wow. Pay less is. Yeah, well, pay less owns pro wings. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't know what Pro Wings does, does for them. That's huge. What's that their is, profits? That's though, crazy. Huh? They've got to have slim margins because they're super. Everything's super. Well, if people are buying their Pro Wings, that's where their big margins. Do you know are. what other store? I don't even know if they exist anymore. But what store? If you bought clothes from there, you never told your friends because you get made fun of. Do you guys remember Kmart? Oh, Kmart. Yeah, remember that people yeah, get made fun of. Us that. Talking about Kmart. Yeah, we just that's over. Champion, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, what we brought up. Yeah. Champion. Oh, Champion yeah, was like know. Kmart's big flagship brand. And now they're crushing. Yeah, now they're yeah, a, yeah. a huge brand. They're what a champion. So <laughs> dude, definitely <laughs> Kmart. Hey, I got some. Oh, I got. Hold on, oh, go before you go. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, it. I wanted to see if you guys could think of the most expensive material on Earth. Oh, uh, uranium. Nope. Plutonium. Nope. The most expensive material? Whale vomit. What's it called? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. No, no. I don't have a guess. Nope. No, no, no guess. It's antimatter. Oh, yeah. But give us the price. Give us Dude, the price of it. Okay. I saw this before. 62 trillion a gram. A gram? A gram. Yeah. It's 62. Because the Hadron Collider is the only thing that can create it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so take like now if you make enough now, would it, if you made a gram of it, wouldn't it destroy everything? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Wait, wait a second. Okay, where do you buy antimatter? Huh? <laughs> I don't think it's eBay. like a commodity. <laughs> it was just how like value it. At that? Some it's physics page was just like expressing like like basically how how much money it takes to create and produce. Doug, look uh, up what does antimatter do? Because the name of it alone makes me imagine that if you dropped it, it would it would be antimatter. So yeah, like would, is it uh, some some relevance to black holes? Like yeah. at that point. Now I know. Now so I know uranium super expensive. What does it say? Antimatter particles are almost identical to their matter counterparts, except that they carry the opposite charge in, in spin. When antimatter meets matter, they immediately annihilate into energy. Oh, so it just create like an explosion. So if you dropped it on the ground, it would boom. energy, it's just wow. energy. I what is energy? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was way above my pay grade. Like I just thought that like was Red Bull or something. Hey, that <laughs> hey, you make a drink with antimatter in it. <laughs> Pure energy. You're coming up with it. Hey. That's not it. Ooh, antimatter. Antimatter is an energy drink. Yeah. Hey, we only have to sell one. <laughs> 62 trillion. <laughs> yeah. We're rich. It's, 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 hey, you know what's so trillion. funny? You see the, uh, the rich old platinum? Yeah. Uh, antimatter. Yeah. yeah, neat, neat guy. That's yeah. pretty neat. <laughs> oh, that's a nice necklace. What's it made out of platinum? Yeah. This uh, is antimatter. You see Steve put the uh, the new Mind Pump coaching shirts on the website. Yeah. Now, why are they so? Why are they 1700 bucks? You don't know why? I do, but this I want to tell the audience. Know, this yeah, come on. Oh, you do? Yeah, can you, can you tell? Like, what's well, the yeah, the, the point of it was we're not trying to sell them, right? You were supposed to be only be able to win them, right? The idea yeah. is to not, but in order to, to have people sell it in order order to to be yeah. eligible, you have to go through the program. Yeah, and so in order to win purchase. or be eligible for it, then then Steve gives you a code. The code gives you 99.9% .9 off, right. so it's like nothing, right? But but we have to put them in the store in order for that process to work. Otherwise, you'd have to go buy each individual that now, wins the shirt. You have to give it now, out. Now, speaking of the Mind Pump Fitness Coaching, there's is there a day? Are we when this launches this episode? Do we have time for the discount? The yeah, sale? we have 24 hours. So they have one day left Whew. as of the airing of this to get the 200 hours off the free all the free add-ons everything. Yes. Okay, it's MindPumpFitnessCoaching.com. The code is 200 off. So if you get if you get this now, you want to sign up, go go for it. The okay. most important thing to note about the coaching thing for those people who are like, oh, maybe I'll get it later. One is the thousands of dollars worth of free bonuses you get. And then more importantly, the idea of this is to build this into literally like a three to five thousand dollar product. It's gonna be a living, it's a living course. It'll continue. We're gonna add stuff to it every year but once you get it that's it you pay no you don't pay a dollar right more. so if you you pay the price right now you're you get grandfathered in as we continue to bolster yeah. the the program over the next few years right, right so right. 
that's probably the, 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 the biggest selling pitch I have Dude, for you to invest in it now. Not sorry. to mention that there's payment options. Speaking of selling, uh, I looked up. So <laughs> Shilajit Gummies, Organifi has them back in stock. So they sold so many of them. They went crazy. I, now, I, we called it, right? We talked about Shilajit. It's studies, Ayurvedic. It's got more studies than almost any other supplement. I learned more about Shilajit. So Organifi has the purest source of Shilajit called Primavi. It's the best source in gummy form. By the way, they don't even last here. We get a bag of them or two. <laughs> They're already gone. And you guys eat them all. Yeah. Um, but check this out. I did not know all of the things that it does. Did you guys know that Shilajit uh, has been shown to reduce uh, nerve-related pain? It's been shown in studies with animals to improve learning and memory acquisition. So it's also a potential nootropic. In mm. animals? In animals. In two human studies, it reduces blood glucose by 6.8%. Reduces inflammation, improves, increases sperm production. And then another one in men Sweet. who supplemented with it for 90 days, men who were infertile, it raised their testosterone by 23%. How oh. crazy is that? <laughs> Have, I can't help, but I'm thinking of right now because you're reading it from your phone and you're reading a study. Did you see the Organifi whitelisting out of us? You talking about Sheila Jeet already? Yeah. And all the people talking shit about you. What are they saying? <laughs> about guy, me? This guy has a fucking study for his bullshit every time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, listen. If you're watching this on YouTube, I can't help the it studies are popping up. You were, you, were, you were doing the exact same thing. You were reading some study off your phone, and then you're yeah. talking about it, and then you just did it again right now. I'm like, that's the ad? And I, obviously, people who don't know the here's, show already. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're not aware. Here's another one. We'll have these all so posted in the show notes. It. Here's a study. Yeah. Two grams of Shilajit daily, which in, the, in, in otherwise uh, healthy people, lowered triglycerides by 21%, LDLC by 22%, increased HDL by 5.8%. Wow. Just, just by having it, nothing else? Nothing else. Interesting. Yep. That's kind of cool. It's 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 got these strange adaptogenic properties. It is. That's why when they came out with it, I was so pumped. You guys saw me. You never see me excited over something yeah. like that. I was like, finally, somebody's put together- a great delivery because it tastes you, like crap. And Chili's eat normally tastes like crap. I'm, normally, been, but yeah. their gummies are good. I haven't had any since we had them in here because we ate them so fast. Um, you also told me too that it's got compounding effects, so it's not yes. like uh, no. So, so it's like uh, the more consistent you take it, the better the effects. That's are right. Mm. That's right. Mm. All right. Speaking of effects, uh, are you? Do you guys know what pheromones are? Yeah, so it's the chemicals that uh, attract uh, your potential mate. Or, yeah. yeah, weird stuff, like you right? Emit them. Yeah, yeah, so and I, I mean, I, I've talked about this before. I, th I always find I find pheromones fascinating because you can't necessarily detect them, but they will influence your behaviors, right? So they'll have women and they'll have them smell a shirt that a man wore, mm -hmm. and they can pretty accurately predict uh, whether or not a man will be a good DNA <laughs> match for them. So they'll mm -hmm. say, "Which shirt are you attracted to?" and they'll smell it. They'll say, I'm attracted to this one. Then they'll test their DNA. And then sure enough, the uh, significantly, they're able to pick out the guy who they'll probably more likely to have healthy babies with mm -hmm. just from, from doing that. Do you guys know that they make perfumes and colognes that you could buy online with pheromones? Mm -hmm. That you, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so I it's bought like the, one, The right? love potion. I bought one. I Spanish tested. fly? <laughs> You're going to try. No. God, that's oh terrible. You know, that's a myth. Was that a myth, God. Spanish fly? Was that real? That was I don't know. Thing. I think it's a myth. Bill, was it, Bill Cosby liked it. I heard. Oh, anyways. it's terrible. That's called uh, a. <laughs> well, that's a different one. <laughs> Sleepy drug. So, yeah. uh, I bought some. So I bought some online to, to kind of test out with Jessica, and I put it on a little bit, and she was like all snuggly on me. I'm like, really? Like, yeah, yeah. That's funny. I know. Isn't there? Isn't there science to support too? There's something about like the our saliva too. Like when yeah, like the that's first, why you kiss each other, and that's why too. Like when You're tasting uh, their people DNA. say like they knew after the first kiss or whatever like that. Yeah. Like there's like something that. Well, here's what's is that weird. pheromone related or is that like something chemically that's in the saliva? No, like, that's something dude, if we else. Get that's into all that, it gets really gross. Say what? You know, like when we get into talking about like how we interact like physically <laughs> with somebody else and all our juices and you know. Oh. It gets really, you know, uncomfortable. Well, that's the prevailing theory as to why we have uh pubic hair and armpit hair. Yeah. It's to collect pheromones. Because the more the most uh, pheromones we produce are in our pubic and armpit area. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, that's funny. Wait a minute. Where'd they collect Sold the pheromones from my clone? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> that's gross. But anyway, like speaking of like my wife, uh, I just I just love her smell. No matter what, she always she'll come back and be like, oh, I gotta take a shower. Her smell to me is always uh amazing. Her just her the way her body smells or whatever. 
I always comment on that. So it's got to be her phone. Even when she's like sweaty and stuff like anything. that. Anything. It's got to be a mat. Are you like, he's like that with your spouse? Yeah. No, I like my it's wife to weird. shower. It really? Yeah, yeah. She stinks. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm particular about that. <laughs> yeah, I like when you shower. I have, the, the, I'm like. I feel like it's a one way thing with me. You know? yeah. You're a big smell guy. I'm a big smell guy. She's not real, you know, like I'm sure, you know, it's probably for the best. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I no, feel I was, like I'm super sensitive to like smell. So like if it's like if you're at all, if there's a hint of sweaty bo or anything like that, like I'm super. You sensitive. smell everything. I do. I do. everything. I you do. even smell things that aren't there. Yeah, I, <laughs> you do. Yeah. I've seen you come in a room before and smell thoughts. Yes. Why is it? Smell Courtney real? always trips out though. I never had bo like ever. You don't have bo. Uh -uh. Ask yeah. her. Call her right now. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> Katrina would say the same thing about me. Now I would attribute that because I'm a like shower freak right like you i shower too many times yeah every day i shower a minimum of two to three times a day so it's so like, you do in the morning before you go to bed yes for at least that that's like bare you, you i talked to you about this before have you changed it do you soap everything still no like when i'm when i'm like on shower number two or like that one shower i have like a good lather and then other showers like just do you to, still soap everything up though? no 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 okay. like i just said one shower is a good lather. That's what I mean. A, in that one shower, do you soap everything? <laughs> yes, I wash my body. <laughs> really? Yes, I everything. Do. Yes, wow, all of that's it. not good for your skin. Yeah, I know. That's why I smell better than you, though. That's, huh? that's why I smell good and you don't smell good. I smell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. is that, is that if the, if, if there was one of us in here that didn't smell good, who do you Stop, think? Who do you think it is? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> yeah. So I trade. So I trade what's probably healthier for my microbiome for smelling yeah. good. I know. Do that. you know that your 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 smell will change depending on your mood too? Mm. So like when you're anxious, uh, people can smell it. I believe that. Oh yeah. yeah. Don't you feel like well, too? You could smell fear in somebody kind of the too. Onion They've said that. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's very yeah. When somebody's like, what did you say? Super I mean, anxious or like uh, uh, nervous about like presenting or whatever it is. Like, yeah, people have like kind of an oniony. I don't know how else to describe it. Yep. Oh, uh, interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I mean, I definitely noticed that. No, I definitely, I, I believe that yeah. for sure. Hey, I had something to, to bring up that I thought was interesting. What you got? So the Super Bowl is coming up. Um, it's at the the. Wait, who's so? Hold on. How far oh, are we God, right we're, now? We're, well, we're well. First of all, this goes next week, and it'll be another weekend of 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 games. So we don't know yet, okay. right? Um, so there's still like what eight teams in it. Oh, there's still eight left. Yeah, yeah. So, but by the time, well, by the time this airs, there'll be less than that. So, okay. will there be semifinals next week? After <sighs> there's four teams there's left. Four teams left. And yeah. When this airs, there will be two teams left. Wait. So after this, then we'll know who the Super Bowl right is right now. Yeah. When this is airing, we'll know the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, you guys want to make predictions because now it's going to go. It'll <laughs> air up. You'll goes. be wrong. Or yeah. Live. Niners. Niners. Niners Ravers. for sure. I mean, I hope. you think Niners and Ravers? N Ni Ravers. Ravers. <laughs> 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 Wow, they, Niners and Ravens is what Ravens? Yeah, yeah, that's who I think it's okay. going to be. But my point of bringing this oh, up a, was not to get into a sports game. talk with you guys, for sure. It was more to bring up that it's at the uh, the Raiders, not the Ravens, the Raiders or the Ravers. It's at the Raiders Stadium, which is in Las Vegas. That's going to be the Super Bowl? That's the new, like, like one that looks like Darth Vader. It's like all Yeah, the Super Bowl's yeah. there. And what's crazy, okay, take a uh, take a shot at what a so they at, here they have these ta VIP tables at this which is really sick of course in Vegas right they've got like these like almost like uh when you go to like a nightclub how they have like VIP tables yeah, yeah, yeah. they have that on the on the field <gasps> right in the end zone okay so what do you what do you think one of those runs for the Super Bowl well hold on let's back up for a oh second oh my god yeah, yeah. with a typical it, Super Bowl are there seats on the field no, well, at Vegas they have those seats. Yeah, I'm saying in other all, no, all the no, games. No, yeah, you don't. In see other that. places, no, 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 no. That's new. That's like that's like the, a thing. What are the most expensive seats normally? Well, wait a second. This is too easy. Well, if you start doing, yeah. yeah well, like, I don't know. I'm trying. To get how about I give you? How about this? Go. You know what? We're I going I, in go into Hakkasan, the, yeah. the the nightclub. It's ten thousand yeah, dollars for a yeah, table. Yeah, okay, that. so right. one of those tables on a football field for Super Bowl. For the Super Bowl. What do you got? I'm gonna say hundred thousand. Okay, there's your guess. Quarter million. Did you already look it up, Andrew? Don't cheat. You already looked it up, didn't you? Yeah, Don't I would say 100 to 150,000. Okay, okay, so you say 100, 100 I'll say 150 just say to go million, yeah. What if I told you that none of you are even close? Oh, oh my wow. God, Fuck dude. off. Million? Well, three quarters of a million. $700,000. Oh, one my table. God. Yes. Am I right, right, Andrew? 
I, I, I'm not seeing that price. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. Let me confirm. I should, I'll, I'll share. 750000 yeah. Somebody's Yeah, well, I mean, somebody bro. would pay that. I, I would, is that fucking nuts I, or what? I, I, now, that's crazy. Your 100000 guess is, is a pretty good guess because you figure you could probably fit seven to 10 people in that, maybe more. I don't even know how many. So you got each, for each person's dropping probably 100 grand. 75 to 100 grand. Yeah, to, to Just sit Just for down. that. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Dude, that Vegas is, is going to be crazy. You know, my buddy's going to the divisional game, right? The Lions and the, the Niners play this yeah. weekend. Which okay, so close. who's who's left right now? Niners, Niners Lions, Ravens, Ravens Chiefs. Chiefs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and, and I don't know. Like, everybody's predicting the Chiefs and, and Lions. Everybody wants the Lions to win. So, mm. you know, sorry, guys. You know. Well, that's just because how long they've yeah. been without it. My buddy's going, but I just. I know, I get it. Yeah, of all the of all the live sport, I know I'm going to piss somebody of people that love this stuff so much, but I just football for that price in person is just not, you know. I know, and it's, I watch football every Sunday. I love football, and mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of live games. Why is it because you can't see much? Yeah, you're yeah, just far to, away. Yeah, you're far. You're far away, and it's there, there's certain sports that are spectator. Basketball and hockey, person. I feel like, are two of the best. Yeah, those are two of the best for sure. When you have a game where there's that many that many players that are all tight and confined and you're far away like you like a fake handoff you're like you're like where's the ball yeah oh, yeah you don't see things yeah. <laughs> that's why you know what i also i don't like live that a lot of people for some reason do too uh, mma fights you see yes fights. oh you're right hey, i, I end up watching the screen half yes. the time yeah, yeah. Right. i've said great seats there and i'm like here look at it well, because we're on the ground you can't yeah. even see what's happening yeah they, yeah they do such a good job with the camera the yeah, zoom in so yeah. you see all these little details oh he's got his wrist oh shit he's almost gonna sink it in like yeah. you, you can't see that in the arena and there's oh. corner posts like obstruct so much yeah and then and the and you're looking through a fence there's so probably it's all about the experience it is right? yeah. and and so yeah. and, and the counter argument to that so I, I got to go one of my favorite games okay the, one of my favorite games i've ever seen live in my life was also the worst seats i've ever sat in my life so i went to this was back when arco arena was where the kings play they don't play there anymore and i sat in the highest seats up where i had to tilt my head like this because i was hitting the <laughs> rafter that's how <laughs> shitty seats. Bleed literally bleed they bleed. probably gave them to me for free right they yeah. were so bad but it was the Kings versus the Lakers. The last time they played each other, it was, and uh, one of them was not going to make the playoffs, and they both were fighting for the same spot. And it was the only basketball game I'd ever been to where, from tip off, nobody sat. I've never yeah, been in a ba whole awesome. basketball game. The entire arena stood because yeah, that's every contagious energy. I had oh, yeah, and that was epic. Yeah, Even was, though I'm like this. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. I think that was Kobe. It was the Cubs playoff game uh, against the Marlins, I believe. And it was right before that guy, like, you know. Um, the famous he, grab? The famous grab. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was in, like, I it was obstructed view seating, right? So you're, like, you're standing, and there's this big post right yeah, in yeah. front of you. And so I was just walking constantly and, like, getting beers and, like, you know, trying to look at the game through, like, um, you know, some of those openings, but yeah, it, the energy was insane Yeah, and it was just cool to be there. So wow. it, that part could be contagious. So I kind of get, I kind of get that. I, I've only been to one, uh, NFL game in my entire life. I've been to some, some baseball games, never been to a basketball game, been to some sharks games, but the one football game I went to, it was the Raiders versus, uh, who were they playing? Who's like one of their name nemesis? Uh, teams wasn't oh, the 49ers Chiefs, no. Broncos uh, Broncos yeah uh, Chiefs think, and Broncos I don't remember so divisional game it was somebody and it was a Raiders Broncos versus this team whatever rivalry. and I remember this guy was wearing not a Raiders jersey and it, this was here in the Bay Area oh, and I remember yeah. he was walking and people were throwing their drinks at oh, him yeah, and like, had, trying to fight him. Yeah. I'm like, this is terrible. No, we. I, I went there. I thing. went with my buddy, who's a Lions fan, and they were Dude, spitting on him and throwing beer at us. Like, yeah, what the hell? Fun. Yeah, no, that's terrible. <laughs> that's <laughs> Raider, Raider fans, Nation. Like, yeah. This is football. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is going on? No, anyway, that's they're out they're, of control. They're, they're for that hey, I got an interesting uh, study for you since I'm the study guy, right? I got a study for you that's old. This is an old study from 1969. Old facts. No, 1963. Check this out, dude. They took. <laughs> they took a bunch of guys and they, for 10 days, had them ejaculate twice a day. And did you guys know that their sperm counts went down 50% and did not return for five months? What? So for 10 days, they ejaculated twice a day. Yeah. They had their sperm counts declined by 50% and did not return back to baseline for five months. Why? Well, evolutionarily, the argument is that if you ejaculate often, your body starts to produce less sperm because it, it feels like it needs to produce less energy to have you procreate since you're having so much sex. Yeah. If you don't ejaculate often, your sperm count goes up because it's trying to improve the odds 
of you having more sex. This is also why... Uh, this is why our fertility lady told us we had to back off. Yes, I this see. is also why attractive people tend to produce less sperm than unattractive people. Did you guys know that? This is true. Because they're having so much sex. No, because evolutionarily speaking, do you guys know that? Testicle size Evolution is reversely loves, correlated to attractiveness in both chimpanzees and in humans. Wow. It's because if you're attractive, you're probably going to have more mates. So you you don't need to have as you don't need to have the, uh, shoot as much of sperm or whatever right. versus people who are, who are more ugly. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> know, it's cool data, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> All right, here's some more. Here's another <laughs> another uh, study I read, which uh, this is our friend um, Chris Williamson post, posted this. Now this is crazy. I want I'd like your guys' opinion. I really on this. like Chris. One percent of the population in America, so one percent, commits sixty three percent of all violent crime. Damn. Okay. So what does that mean? If all violent crime careers came to a stop after a third convention, in other words, if it was a three strikes, you're in jail for life. Three violent crimes, mm -hmm. you go to jail forever. More than 50% of all convictions for violent crime in the total population would be prevented. We would wow. drop all violent crime by 50% by simply doing that. Wow. Right there. Just being a little tougher. What do you guys think about that? Wow. What a cool conversation. Wow. Yeah. It, wow. So what, did he make an argument for it? Well, he, I mean, he, that's just he, it. That's, he just posted that and then let people argue. Let comments. them figure it out. Here's yeah. the deal. I'm, Ooh, I'm wow. not a three strikes you're out for felonies, but I'm a three strikes you're out for violent crime. I think violent crime yeah. should be the most punished crime. Not drug they, offenses. Yeah, I was going like to say that. they were lumping drug offenses in that. And they had yeah, that violent crime is a big deal. And violent if, crime if is I, your, if, you're hurting If somebody. three strikes violent crime. I'm, I'm for it. Yeah, you because yeah. you, you're harming somebody else. Yes, totally. I'm not, I mean, if you do some shady shit and you steal money or you do whatever like no, that, no, that's different. Uh, yeah. Current laws, right, right. Yeah, drug laws. You hurt. Laws. You hurt another human being. That's right. You go and assault. I cannot people. believe that that would actually reduce that much because I didn't only that. one percent produce so much of the violent crime. Yeah. So if all those people were thrown in jail forever for the third time, violent crime would drop by fifty percent. Wow, just from that alone. That's crazy. I think I think our 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 law system and how we punish people is just it's so twisted. Mm -hmm. You know, you get caught with a certain amount of drugs, jail for minimum ten years. Yeah. You beat the shit out of people, or you molest the kid, or whatever, and it's like parole, yeah, or like a week or something. You know, I've seen some of these things. It's like, no man, violent crime. You're we actually need to reevaluate. I think, a lot, yeah, a lot of those different like. Each one of those crimes has its own, yeah. Um, yeah, severity in terms of like, yeah, like you, you would if you're the judge, like that should be the the, the consideration is like, you know, if it, it is excessively violent, it's violent, like you know, you put that in this category versus like if it's a drug offense and it's really they didn't like mm -hmm. they're not selling it to their kids or like you know, yeah, each one has to be evaluated individually. Like I hate these like generalized blanket. Yeah. Uh, laws that like just lump in but, a lot of people that aren't like as offensive. But violent crime itself, I think, should be um, definitely at the top. You know, if you're if you're hurting other people. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'd be interested to see some cases or scenarios where something gets lumped into violent crime that was like, well, that wasn't that violent. Like, because here's a, you could get in trouble at like a bar fight. Like a bar fight. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, that maybe somebody else provoked that. and you got into it. Like. That yeah. would suck, but that's only one time, right? So hopefully you you learn to like not put yourself in that position the next time. But yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, and then also, does it? Would you make a difference or a stipulation for if it's accidental? Well, the time frame in between them, right? Like if it's like, bam, when I was eight, sure. eighteen, I had Good this point. random thing happen to me. Then I was twenty four, and this random thing happened. And then, and then I'm thirty six. Yeah, yeah. thirty six now, and this random thing happened to me. That's now a I'm good in, point. Because mm. I feel like that would kind of matter too. Like because you, I could think of probably three. But, like a time frame, but statistically, of, of the, the laws that if we become harsh on the laws that, uh, that when we're harsh on violent crime and property crime, you tend to see a dramatic improvement in safety in society. It's both yeah. of those, violent and property, and you see this in like New York City was a good example. New York City got real bad for was, a long time, and well, then uh, Giuliani came in, yeah, he and he punished violent crime and property crime wasn't quite there, harshly, and it changed the whole city. Sal, wasn't there a lot of stuff, too, around... Um, we got a lot of hate for that. Well, but yeah, and all the, the uh, smut. And, what and about these, the programs uh, where we used to put them, put a lot of uh, convicts to work? Like, yeah. wasn't there, wasn't that like a, a good st statistic on yes. that too? Like when you gave them purpose and you gave them a job. They were actually rehabilitated. And that's, I was yeah. going to bring that up too. Yeah. That's, that used to be a big incentive for them, uh, you know, to, to be able to be reintroduced to society. Cause like, if we don't have a good program to reintroduce. Let's go right back. Yeah. It's like, what are we doing? We're just like, just might as well keep them in well, there. Well, you go yeah. to jail for four <clears throat> years or even a year. Um, you, 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 you learn no skill. You just got out of jail. You probably had to like. 
change your appearance and whatever to protect yourself on jail. Now you're out in the real world and it's like, I don't know what to do. So I can just do stuff on the black market. Right. Get back thrown in jail. I'm already comfortable there. You know, I think that I definitely think we should train them. Yeah, what caused us to eliminate that? Because it was like that before, wasn't it? What the three strike? No, 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 no. Like oh, the, re- rehab. Yeah, it, it, the attitude was like punish, punish, punish. Which that the the evidence shows that if you lock people up, don't give them an outlet, don't give them any purpose, the odds that they'll recommit crime is really high. Like they took gyms out of prisons in California. Mm-hmm. That, that was so dumb. Like, why would you do that? Yeah. And a lot of people were like taking gyms out. First off, it was a great incentive to keep people from doing anything yeah. in prison because we could take away their, their gym time. I just think it was funding. I think they just cut funding and then that just became a thing. Which is where- weird to me because I think it would be the opposite. Like imagine they they all had to produce something and you pay them a very, very minimal low wage. I mean, they're in prison. They don't need yeah. out. They don't, I'm like, why that, would you- That's probably as part of it, right? Because it's like, oh, we're taking advantage that's of right. them, Exploring right? Them. And it's like, yeah, which is is silly because now what? Now you cut you know all means for them to, to be able to have some kind of value coming back in to society and applying it. Yeah. yeah. I, there's stories of people. There was one guy, I don't remember his name, but he went into jail, was wrongly convicted, and couldn't get good representation, <clears throat> spent his time in prison getting a law degree. Defended himself and got himself out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Became a lawyer yeah. in prison. There, I've there's heard a, couple there's a lot of good stories like that yeah. where someone goes in and you, I mean, honestly, if I went into prison for 10 years, I would, bro, I'd come out fucking hell. I'd be reading oh, I'd be reading yeah. like crazy. I would survive by isolating myself <laughs> and just dedicating myself to learning and spirituality. That's what yeah. that's all I would Yeah, do. the goal the goal would Try be to. to come out and be literally like no hell of shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, you got all the time in the world. Uh, It'd be awful. Be to, a lot of butt clenching exercises. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Justin, so he's got hey, that look, right? Yeah. Terrible transition. Not today! Terrible <laughs> transition, but I've been meaning to bring up Disneyland. Uh, to Speaking of like, <laughs> <laughs> It's a small world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I, I've, but what made me think about it is you talked about your father-daughter dance. I remember the one time you missed, you had to bring yeah. your daughter to Disneyland, oh, yeah. and it was in my notes to bring this up and talk about it. So, and I you remember I've been, I've been following the Disneyland thing lately, right? Obviously I have a bunch of stock in them. So I'm so curious about how they're going to dig themselves out of this hole and they're putting a lot of energy and effort towards the theme parks. And they're going to be building a bunch more. And I forget how many billions invest in that. And they rolled out this new thing this year. And I don't know, I don't know, maybe Doug or Andrew can check to see if it's live yet, but uh, they're eliminating all lines, no lines at Disneyland anymore. So what do you, okay, do you just get a beep on your phone and then you? Sh- it's you like yeah. It? So it's like it, it's like the next level to their express thing that they already did oh. before. Where you know you go you go get like tickets and oh, it, it tells you your time to go ride is at yeah. this time. So fast pass. Or it's whatever. like yeah. It's, it's like, like, like a fast pass to the next level to where it's. What like, do you do that? You just get a bunch of tickets. And so stand this is around? so this is no. This is their logic behind it and putting more energy and effort into all the th- concessions and things. Of course, that you spend uh, money. where you got to hang out while that's, you're waiting. That's of right. Uh, I think it's very fucking brilliant. You eliminate the lines that everybody you know complains what? about yeah. you offer more things like concessions and stuff is this than a to spend Iger idea. It's brilliant. bro it's a brilliant idea yeah. i saw that and I went that is really smart because you're gonna i'm attract- just trying to imagine what that's gonna look like imagine you go with your family you go get four tickets we got to show up at these times what do we do? Let's, I don't They're, know. Well, Dude, they have so many structures and things where yeah. you just go look or the kids climb on. Th- I bet you they'll even like add They're like going to add. That's what they'll that add like, places for you to spend money on. Yes. Imagine trying to get your little kids. Oh, we're going to go 15 minutes. No, oh, well, well, yeah. well, and then the other thing is that you can go do, I know you can do at least two, maybe more. You can go get the tickets for So you could go to like, oh, let's go to Pirates of the Caribbean, grab a ticket. Oh, then let's go over to this right. other one, grab a ticket. Right. And then try So where's it at? And then they organize it all. Yeah. Disney World. Oh, Disney uh, World. I don't believe Disney. it's Disneyland. Just, oh, it's World. Uh, Disney yeah. World. My bad. Yeah. Have you guys yeah. ever been to Disney World? I haven't. Have I not. have just, so it's like three different parks. It's way better than Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, I've been way to one of, one of the three. Uh, I didn't go to Epcot. Ep- Epcot, I heard oh, that was really good. That's the best. Okay. That's the best. Epcot's all these different countries, and the people working in each of the countries are typically from those countries. And it's pretty legit. It's pretty authentic. That's no, cool. I, I want to go to Disney World for sure. I mean, Disneyland, I've been to a bunch I'm of glad time, they're putting effort back in their parks. I mean, it's it was kind of on a decline. You know, when you used to go to the park and it was like, it had that, like everybody was really chipper and like helpful mm-hmm. and, and, you know, it, it just lost a lot of that. Uh, the, I mean, COVID kind of helped, you know, really destroy that. <laughs> yeah. But That's why I think it's kind of cool they're going this direction. Yeah. I, what a smart play 
to do that. I mean, that's going to attract a lot of people just hearing that, like no more lines. Like that sounds amazing. And meanwhile, yeah. it's a great Don't way bring to me them, back for sure to get them, get people to spend money elsewhere and make the experience. Cool I, I bought my, my, my daughter's going to go with her friends soon. And Jessica, they're all going to go to Disney. It'll be the first time though, that my daughter and her friend will be off on their own. So it'd be kind of cool. Like literally they're going to mm-hmm. go by themselves. No, Jessica's going with them. They're oh. staying at the hotel, the Disneyland hotel. And then, then they you're take off them, on the ride. And then she's going to go and then we'll let like them go point, yeah. and let them kind of explore on their own, which will be fun for them. Do we, any of you guys use the uh, Apple tags? Do you, do you guys use those? I've never used them. What's that? Tags? They're so cool. I saw them at the uh, store. I thought about buying I, some. My, so my, my, sister, like my sister-in-law uh, uh, had said that they've been around for over a decade, but they've really just become popular recently. I saw a commercial a while back, a while back for kids, and I thought that was brilliant. Mm-hmm. They're GPS tags. Mm-hmm. And you like you put them in like your, they make them to where you can put them in your kid's shoe or, or like that, uh, and it's a and GPS mark on them. Uh, and you also could tell when somebody else's GPS tagged you. Like so, if I got into your eyes' car and I had a GPS tag in my backpack or something like yeah. that, your iPhones would alert you. There's a GPS yeah. tag within oh, whatever. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you know, if I didn't someone's know they tagging. had that because I, I mean, I just got uh, forever. It's birthday. We just got him a watch, and that was just because you could set settings on it. So if he has it at school, you can't use it. Like it's like it's. There's a GPS tag. So uh, Apple it's makes in it. it. Yeah, I yeah. Use it for my family. Huh? I use these for my watch. family. You do use them. Yeah, I have them on my keys, my wife's keys, my dogs on their collars, and my son's backpack. Oh, and they're brilliant. Great. That is a smart idea. I know. I just oh. think I think that's so cool, especially when you have really little kids. Like, okay, at one point your kids should have some sort well, of autonomy you can do with the phone. You know, I can look at the location with my kid's phone. I have that. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's the exact same concept. Okay. okay. I, I mean, but I mean, imagine uh, you know putting it on their shoe is probably a, a safer. I should put on the damn TV remote control. I swear <laughs> to God, nothing is more frustrating. <laughs> nothing is more frustrating to 100%, me dude. than going to watch TV yeah. and I can't find the damn remote control <laughs> and I tear the couch apart and everything. It's just so frustrating. Like an old dad, dude. I'll, my oh. dad used to do that. He's get one time he got so mad. Oh, was, dad used to get so mad with bro, the remote. Yes. Bro, my dad got so mad yes. right he flipped the, the couch over. Because he's, he's so mad. I, I saw, it's like the only control we have. I've seen <laughs> yeah, <laughs> left. That's it. I yeah. saw it was like a viral video on Instagram of like like old, old dad things that dads would do or something like that. And one of them was like a remote that was like Velcro. It was like Velcro to the <laughs> yeah. to the table or yeah, what that. You don't uh-huh. lose it. i you know I've never really lost the TV remote. I don't know. Well, because but you I got, also you got like, you and and and, uh, and Max, and I don't think Max does he operate it. No. Yeah. So you yeah. Once you he starts can... using it, you'll <laughs> he'll uh, take it. Oh, uh, maybe that's okay. Maybe yeah. That's, that's why. what happened. Like. I got lots of remotes too, so that could get uh. really. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Oh, bro, this is how frustrating I got. I my I couldn't find the remote the other night, trying to look for it, and I was just so pissed off. And I just went on Amazon and bought a new one because you can get it for like eight bucks. Yeah. And then Jessica came back home, and I'm like, I, damn remote, I can't find it. And she's like, oh, it's because I put it in my pocket. And I don't, I'm like, why? But anyway, now we got an extra remote. See, I'm so. lucky because mm-hmm. all, I, have, I I either have a it's Samsung or Sony. So I have, a, I have several Samsung yeah. and Sony TV. So I have several remotes for each of them. So and they just, all work. Yeah. So, I mean, it wouldn't be hard. To, Back in the day, remotes were expensive. If you had to get another one for your TV, they were remember. very expensive. I don't remember. Like 50, 60 bucks. Now you can get one for eight bucks on yeah. Amazon. They were that much back they then? They were. They were. Oh, that's fair. And then they started making universal the ones. Universal. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's you know how they get you like up. that today is your your car keys, all these stupid car keys yeah. that are all the ones you don't actually it's turn like 400 the, bucks. Yeah. yeah. You, the battery goes dead. It costs you like 300 bucks. <laughs> what the fuck is this <laughs> all about? Oh, yeah. I know, it's crazy. It's a hustle. Anyway, all right. So let's give a shout out. Uh, Josh Trent. I'd like to shout him out. Hey, we haven't shouted him out in a while. Good Josh. Good friend of ours. What's the name of his well, podcast? Wellness now? and Wisdom, I think. Is now? it Wellness and Wisdom? Yeah. You better make sure because I know he's changed a couple times. Yeah, let I'm, me see. I'm pretty sure. It used to be Wellness so Force. Kind of a bad friend you guys are. It was, stop it. You're like, I'm right. Watch, just, watch, I'm you're right. Name for wellness and Wisdom. Thank okay. you, Jeff. Boom. Yeah. Good, Good stuff. F- you're the better friend. Nootropics are working. I'm always right. All right, so what is ButcherBox? Well, this company sends grass-fed meat to your door, wild-caught fish to your door, heritage pork to your door, and much more. If you like to eat meat, if you have a high-protein diet, but you want the best, you want animals that are treated well, you want fatty acid profiles that are the best. You want healthy meats that are convenient and inexpensive. You go to ButcherBox. This company is incredible. And right now, if you sign up with us, you get either two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken breasts, or two pounds of salmon for free in every order for an entire year, plus $20 off. You just got to use our link. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Philip from Georgia. Philip, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? Love the show. What up? Thanks, man. Thanks for calling in. What's going on? 
Ah, uh, so um, I have mobility issues. Um, maybe maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not. Uh, I can't reach my my hands behind my back. You know, like the Apple scratch test or whatever. And uh, so I'm just having issues with that. I'm having issues, you know, reaching around my back, uh, even tying my shoes, man. I mean, I've gained some weight because um, I went through school. I went through college in 2020 and I just finished up last year. And so I was still going to the gym, but my diet was crap because I just I'm kind of a all or nothing. So if I'm not going to the gym consistently, my diet gets crappy. And so that's pretty much what happened with school and work and everything. So um I'm still going to the gym, uh, but yeah, I've just like issues with uh, my mobility and I'm always having issues with my shoulder when I bench press, uh, overhead press is fine. So I, I don't really know what's going on. Okay. Well, <clears throat> there's a couple things you could do, um, with your traditional strength training. One of the things you can do is lower the weight and increase the range of motion little by little. Okay. And you want to go lower in weight when you do this, because the current strength that you have is trained around the current range of motion that you work with. So you're going to want to significantly reduce the weight, not by 10 pounds or so, but like 30, 40%, and then slowly work into new ranges of motion. The second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to practice mobility movements several times a day for five minutes or so, morning, afternoon, evening. Mobility is more, um, it's built faster and more effectively when it's practiced frequently for short periods of time versus infrequently for long periods of time. So in other words, one, you know, one hour mobility session a week is not going to be as effective as, as let's say 20 minutes, uh, spread out throughout the day, every single day type of deal. Right. It, when, even when time is controlled for, do you have maps prime pro? I would, uh, yes, I have. Yes. That, have, uh, he's, he's running maps in a bulk right now. It looks like, uh, and I, I think performance would be a great place too. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a great idea. I would go maps performance. And then add to that mobility movements from Prime Pro on the areas where you find the worst uh, mobility. So you just mentioned shoulders. Uh, there's shoulder and scapular mobility movements. And what you would do is you just practice those a few times a day. And then MAPS Performance is an athletically minded strength training program. And athletes need to have strength through multiple planes of movement and, you know, like rotation and lateral. And so that program is also a mobility strength training program. So you'll still be strong and all that, but it's very mobility focused. Yeah. I just want to add on to what Sal said in terms of like all throughout the day, it's really just like something you think of when you get up uh, out of your chair, like when you're at work, like just any time you can just to do one of those mobility drills is going to have a significant impact because it's, it's the frequencies, it's, it's the mm -hmm. amount of volume that you're going to apply towards uh, training that shoulder to now be able to kind of brace and, and control um, and, and, and have stability there again. And so, you know, the, the biggest intention going into a lot of the mobility uh, movements is to, to make sure that when you get to a restricted range, you stay there and you squeeze and you tense your muscles to try to, you know, be able to connect again and also to uh, train them that everything is is stable and safe. So it, it's just and it's the, the instability there or the restriction there is that, you know, your body signal is that it's not, it's not secure. It's not safe. And so we need to kind of press our way into it and it's very incremental. So it's going to take a, a bit of time. It's a very great gradual process, but each time you, you go to apply one of these mobility moves, get to that sticking point, stay there, squeeze, tense up, kind of back off and just keep training your body that way. Philip, um, <clears throat> have you ever watched the webinar that I did? I think we titled it uh, for low back pain, but it's a 50, bit, 50 minute mobility session that I did. Have you seen that? I don't think I have. No. Okay. I'm going to have Doug send the link. You're talking about the Prime Pro webinar? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm going to have Doug send that to you. Um, and that's just a free webinar that you can go through. And I think that that'll, that'll have tremendous value. One of my favorite things to do with a client like you that's that's complaining of like mobility issues in the shoulders and hips like you are is put you on a program like MAPS Performance. In there is two days that are designed to be full mobility days as it is. Now, as you're going through the program and go through that webinar I sent over, you'll start to notice there'll be a couple moves that you notice a big impact, right? Like you'll do the handcuff with rotation or the shoulder circles mm -hmm. and you'll be like, oh man, I just feel, I feel that. After I get done, I feel so much better. <laughs> Same thing with your hips. You'll notice something like the 90-90s and you'll be like, oh wow, those feel really good. When you find a couple of these movements that you feel improvement like instantly just by doing it one, once or twice, 
Those are the ones that what the guys are saying about being frequent all day long is, man, when I do those 90 90s or when I do those wall circles, it makes my shoulders feel better. So then just pick one or two. Because sometimes people get overwhelmed with mobility. They go mm. through like a program like performance or they see these videos with all these exercises and they're like, this is overwhelming. And it's like, I'm not going to fucking do this every day, all these days. So literally pick one or two, like one for the shoulders, one for the hips that you feel the best when you do it and just do it all the time and practice it all the time. That seems to be the best strategy for most of my clients that are trying to improve mobility, general mobility like you yeah, are. In other words, get it's better to get good at one or two than it is to just practice 10. Mm, okay. Yeah, because I was trying to do the, um, uh, what's, what's your mobility uh, program called again? I've got both of them. Prime, there's Prime, Prime Pro, Pro and then there's Prime. So I wasn't really sure which ones I should do before my workout. And between doing that and my workout, I was in the gym for way too long because yeah. I go in the gym in the morning before work. So, uh, yeah, so I think performance will probably be good for me yep. being that uh, it'll save time, too. So I don't have to be in there two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. do performance. It follow the program the way it's laid out. And then do the webinar. Just one day do the webinar and pick – two movements from the webinar and just practice them that you really like that. And I'm guessing it's going to be the shoulder one, which is the handcuff with rotation. And I'm guessing it's going to be the 90 nineties is what I think are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. And then just stick to those two. And so that's how you would start every workout. You prime with the 90, 90, you prime with the handcuff with rotation, and then you get into your workouts and make that your primer to get started every day. Start there. And then we can always build and, and modify as we go down. Okay. Awesome. Cool. All right, man. Yeah. All right, Philip. We're gonna send those over to you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You got it, man. Right, Thanks for coming in. You know, the whole frequency issue or or you know, point that we're making with mobility, it really boils down to this. Like, you know, mobility when it comes to getting muscles to activate where you need them to provide stability. That's a that's largely a role of the central nervous system. We're not looking for hypertrophy, right? We're not looking for muscle growth. So when it comes to simply getting the central nervous system to do what you want, frequency is key. Practicing all day long is what gets the CNS to respond the best. Mm -hmm. Now, hypertrophy or muscle growth, frequency is important, but so is intensity, so is the stress involved with the exercise, all those different things. So, so this is why practicing a little bit all day long is better when it comes to things like mobility or even flexibility than a more dedicated longer session. When it comes to building muscle, then it gets, you know, you're, 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 you're better off somewhere in the middle or with a little bit more intensity or longer sessions. You know, one of the things we, <clears throat> we didn't address that will help this. He said that he's kind of all or nothing and he's been going to the gym, but he's not on his diet. If you are over consuming calories and eating foods that are not ideal for you, there's a chance Inflammatory. To, he's going to be inflamed, which yeah. is also going to reduce mobility, totally. especially in things like the shoulders, just going to make that yeah. that much more That's difficult. So if this becomes like a focus of yours, Philip, a good thing to do too is drink like, a lot of water. Yes. Yeah. Eat foods that are not yes. inflammatory. Stay mm -hmm. hydrated, go on a, a calorie restricted diet. And then, then you'll see, and then practice like the frequency, like the guys were saying, and though the combination of dieting and that you're going to see the greatest well, improvement. And really him being worried about like the long workout in terms of staying there too long and two hours, like, like the, the actual mobility, if you build in a routine, uh, first thing in the morning, like before you take a shower, um, you know, before you get in your car, like, uh, when you get to work and it, it's all like throughout your regular routine, you know, you're going to make a lot, you're going to move the needle so much further than you will. If you're just applying it in front of your workout. Our next caller is Danielle from California. Danielle, how's it going? What's up guys? Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Yeah. What's happening? Everyone always says that, but it's like weird to actually see your guys like in front of me. That's so cool. <laughs> um, first off, obviously the, the obligatory thank yous. Um, you guys are great. I'm a coach and like athlete. So I resonate with a lot of stuff you say on multiple aspects. And uh, I just really appreciate all the content, everything you guys put out. Thank you. And you guys are seriously like, saving my life right now because I have two boys and they will not nap anywhere besides the car. Um, <laughs> oh, no. So I just put you guys on. <laughs> I put oh, you guys on. It makes it a little more bearable. So thank you. When, Ad when Adam talks, right I fall asleep probably. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. They go right to sleep. No problem. <laughs> All right. So I'll just read um, from my email. I revised it a tiny bit just because I've had a few changes, but here's kind of a brief little background. Um, I've been an athlete my whole life, played college softball and tennis, and became a t- tennis teaching pro after getting my degree. After falling into the cardio bunny yo-yo diet trap for years, I eventually found and fell in love with Olympic weightlifting in my early 30s and started competing in that shortly after. I've always found it really easy to train for my sport, but since becoming a mom of two, it's been very difficult to find the time and energy to train like I'm used to doing. Uh, When I first wrote this email, I'd been experiencing a particularly rough few months of sleep thanks to my kids. I was getting an average of maybe three to four hours a night and constantly exhausted. Stress was super high. I had two random injuries, really bad mood swings, and it felt daunting to even be on the court to coach my own athletes, let alone to train for myself. Um, So my first question is, when going through times that my sleep quality and quantity are severely affected, what should I really be prioritizing? Should I even be trying to train at all? Or is that only doing more harm than good? And how should I adjust my nutrition to help aid my recovery? Danielle, what a great question. How old yeah. are your kids, by the way? Uh, three and one. Yeah. Ooh, me too. I got, I got the same ages. So <laughs> yeah. it's really tough for people who don't have little ones. It's, it's hard to understand. But the sleep deprivation, I mean, I saw my wife you really deteriorate uh, in her in terms of her health, mental health, the whole deal, because it is tremendously challenging. And the way you need to approach your exercise and diet needs to be centered around how to care for yourself and how to keep you going through this season. And it is a season, okay? And you might hear this from parents with older kids. This will end. It will change. It will, and it does. When you go back in hindsight, you'll be like, "Wow, that was really hard. That was a, it went by fast." Mm-hmm. But when you're in the middle of it, you're like, "Is this ever going to end?" Type of deal. So ev- everything has to be really about improving your ability to function and show up in life. So what do workouts look like? You're probably going to do like 10 minute bouts throughout the day yeah, maps 15. of movements mm-hmm. that are going to just make you feel better. Like it could be static stretching. It could be like Rubber one, bands. it could be bands, it could be one exercise, it could be, you know, uh, a suspension trainer. The yeah. goal is like right now, my priority is this. I got to show up for my kids. I got these priorities, obviously the most important thing for me. So what can I do to help me feel better? Not what can I do to make gains or prevent muscle loss or don't get stuck in that, in that mindset of, oh, I'm going to go backwards with my fitness. Here's the other thing I want to say to you, Danielle, you have such a fitness background, yep. <clears throat> when things start to change and you're able to get like seven hours of sleep a night, and you, your body's going to bounce yeah. back fitness-wise so fast, Totally, it's going to blow you away. So don't even worry about any of that stuff. So diet is the same thing. So in the, in the types of foods that I would focus on, now you're probably going to want to reach for comfort foods for that immediate, um, you know, that immediate, I guess, stress relief. Try to do two things. Drink a lot of water. This is what I noticed my wife literally would forget to drink uh, water. So she started, we started getting half a, half a gallon water jug and she would try and drink, you know, you know, two of those a day. That made a big difference. Have a high protein breakfast, have protein shakes throughout the day. Because when you have a three-year-old, a one-year-old, especially if you're by them, by yourselves with them, even preparing food, heck, even going to the bathroom can be hard because you got one on you and the other one doesn't want to go down. Right. So protein shakes help, helped a lot. A high protein breakfast uh, helped a lot. And really try to eat foods that are easy to digest. Just put less stress uh, on the body. And that's the best advice I can give you. As far as workouts are concerned, MAPS 15 would be the one that would suit you the best, which it's literally a 10 or 15 minute workout every single day. But there may even be days where that seems like, oh, I don't even have that time or whatever. In which case one exercise or something that makes you feel physically better, which it could literally be, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to sit here and stretch for five minutes. That'll do you better uh, across the board, yeah. including what you may be fearing, which is the, am I going to lose my fitness type of deal? Because anything above that is actually going to be counterproductive. Well, having, you know, mass 15 at least is uh, like a plan, some kind of a plan, you know, some kind of a backbone to your day, I think is good. But yeah, there's going to be so much room for flexibility here. Like I wouldn't honestly even hold, 
that like as rigid as you normally would in terms of like your program and following things and doing, you know, a consistency in terms of workout. It's really about like what uh, you feel like you can accomplish in the amount of time that you have in that window. Uh, and so like, you know, referring to that, I think is going to be amazing and a help for you. Uh, but really it's about like just getting what you can, what you can in to, to help your body to feel good and get your muscles to contract and move and get circulation. And so, you know, really it's, that's about like keeping your mind healthy and, and, and active and, and feeling good. So that's really what the mentality going on right now in, in this sort of period of your life. This program was inspired by uh, what Katrina and I were going through when we were exact same kind of stage where you're at. So this is what we and what we had done because we didn't have MAPS 15 at the time. We were modifying MAPS Anabolic to look exactly what MAPS 15 looks like. The thing that I also want to remind you that's awesome and great news for you is that because you have a, a background in lifting, you've been doing this for so long. The amount of volume that you need to to maintain the physique is is yeah. so so much less than most people realize, and that was like kind of what had happened. I was coming back and I was telling the guys, "Man, I'm I'm only doing these two exercises, but it's crazy how good I feel." And oh my god, I was getting stronger, and it's like this is weird. Like the amount of volume, this is so much lower than what I'm used to doing. But in the context of where you're at in your life right now, that's exactly what your probably your body needs. So don't be afraid to to take a day off of that every once in a while if you know you've been really deprived and just simply following that 15 to 20 minutes a day uh, when you can. Uh, you'd be surprised how good you're going to feel and how much you will be able to maintain. Danielle, do you have equipment at home and like anything you could use for yourself at home? Um, most of my stuff is actually at work. Cause I do kind of like a little fitness class, uh, with okay. some of my tennis people too, but I do, I have a suspension trainer. I have some bands. I have the, uh, I have a crossover trainer system. Okay, good. Good. Random yeah. dumbbells, medicine ball. Oh, perfect. So it's literally like, okay, I'm kind of feeling like I need to move, not feeling good. One yeah. exercise you go and you do one exercise and then you're done. And if you did that like <laughs> twice a day, that would, that would equate to, you know, like a couple workouts a week, mm -hmm. but it's spread out and done in a way to where it doesn't stress your body as much. The, the fatigue and waste buildup and damage on the body is not as much as if you were to dedicate all those times into one or two workouts where you get away. Here's the other thing too. Do you have a, a network of, of other people, other moms uh, or friends with kids that are your age that you, you talk to on a regular um. basis? I totally do, but not a lot. I mean, I have a couple that I lift with, but they don't have kids. Um, Doesn't count. My friends that do have kids don't really lift, so it's kind of like a weird. Mm. So go like, on in between. Go on Facebook, find a group of moms with young kids who work out. Only mm. because you know, I noticed for myself. This is important. This is just. Just great. I mean, uh, you can just put it in our great, forum. Yeah, well, we have a forum. We'll put you in there if you're not in there, there's by the way. Of, there's a lot of moms in there. Okay. But it's it just just to talk to people and hear about their same struggles, it makes you feel less like you're on your own. You know, like when you, it's like when couples hang out with other couples with small kids and you start to share stories and then you're like, oh, okay, I guess this is normal. I, I was losing yeah. my mind, but it's it makes a huge difference. Uh, just to know somebody's kind of going through the trenches with you and stuff yeah, for yeah. sure. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I've noticed too is like when I, when I've tried to take that approach, like my mind always goes to like, this isn't enough of this, course. or this mm -hmm. is boring. I want to have a barbell in my hand. Like, how would you recommend like, kind of like, I don't know, like positive self-talk is like kind of not my jam. I feel kind of silly doing it, but, um, do you have anything else that you would recommend to like, kind of get out of that mindset? Well, let me ask you this. You teach tennis, right? Yeah. Okay. So I've never played tennis. If you were to teach me, uh, a backswing, it would feel really weird and awkward for me. I mean, it, it would not be a natural whatsoever. What would it require for me to make it feel like it was natural? Practice yeah. time. S same thing with positive self-talk. We're so conditioned. And do we do this to ourselves that we're so it's such an automatic thing to have negative self-talk that anything other than that feels, uh, hokey weird like oh, oh you know oh i'm i'm great i'm doing good like i don't feel great like this is so stupid this is like new agey crap the yeah. more you do it the 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 more natural it becomes so think of it that way you think of your students like okay i gotta just keep practicing this and make it a conscious thing like you're gonna you know like you're in your head and you're gonna say like this is not enough no no, no this is this is more this is what i need to be doing and just mm -hmm. and, and say it out loud 
Don't say it in your head. Say it out loud. You'll actually build a the, the practice will develop faster if you say it. And it sounds hokey and weird, but the more you do it, the the more it'll become automatic. And that's just the data shows this across the board. So it's something that's not natural, which is why it feels weird. But it works. Mm-hmm. It definitely works. At the very least, it makes you aware of your negative self talk because whatever negative self talk you're aware of. There's like, that's like the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that just happens uh, subconsciously that you're not even paying attention to. Well, hopefully we've earned your respect too. And you could also lean on, the guys told me to trust the process. I'm actually going to be blown away by me just following and sticking to this. Like, let me see, let me see, let me see. I trust these guys. These guys seem to know what they're talking about. Let me see if I listen to them and just follow this process and then watch. You'll see at the end of it, it, we, it always ends up blowing people's minds, especially people that are coming from your place where you you have trained at a high level and it really feels like there's no way this could make me feel better or there's no way I'm going to get gains or do well with the and it and it has done that every time for everybody including ourselves. Yeah, well yeah. you got a double whammy too Danielle where um uh moms it's almost like you feel like complaining about how challenging this is feels weird because then it sounds like I'm not being grateful. I love my kids. I love being a mom. I don't want to say anything negative because it feels like I don't, you know, whatever. And then you got the other double whammy, which double, which is doubles it, which is that you trained at a high level. And when you're an athlete at a high level, you don't complain. You just put your head down and you go. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you're hurt. So am I. Let's go. Don't be weak, whatever. So you got to, it, but it's okay. It's totally okay to be like, this is, this is hard. This sucks. Yes. I love it. I love my kids, but this is also hard. And yes, this workouts are not I, like what I used to do, but I just strung four days in a row of doing a couple exercises a day. And, uh, considering the circumstances I'm on a roll right now, you know, type of deal. So, uh, that's, you're, you're fighting against your nature, which has been developed over years. <clears throat> just consider that. Yeah. I don't know if it helps, but like when, when we were going through it and not getting a lot of sleep and all that, I just started looking at it as like, this is medicine. This is this movement. This exercise is mental medicine for me because I need, I need to, to have this outlet. So that way, I, you know, I have more of a positive outlook at the situation that like, I know it's not ideal. I know like I need more sleep. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in the thick of it. Uh, but this is actually my only sort of outlet right now to feel a bit better and feel like I have some energy again. And so, and it's the right dose. You do too much, you know, now we're overwhelming your body. So, um, just, just thinking of it, I guess, differently. It's really, it's a different mindset and approach that you have to kind of practice and work your way towards. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, it makes a lot of sense for sure. And I feel like I kind of, I'm maybe you guys, I'm, I think you guys have said this before where it's hard to kind of practice what you preach sometimes, like you're your, your totally. own worst yeah. enemy. And I, I tell my athletes a lot of the same stuff that you guys are telling me. And I've had my coaches tell me the same thing. And like, so I just need to like, really just say, screw it. This is where I'm at. And just kind of go with it. Be, but, be your own coach. If you need to separate yourself into a coach and student, and then have empathy for the student that doesn't want to listen that's something that helped me a lot. Danielle, we're going to send That's you the cool. MAPS 15, and then we're also going to put you in the in the private forums in there too. But just, uh, did you get a chance to go through the the coaches, the, the three days of teaching? Uh, I did. I just finished it yesterday. It was awesome. Oh, good. I, oh, yeah. I should have said that too. Yeah, it was so much fun to listen to and just like, you guys are so like chill on the podcast. You can tell that there's like true passion behind what you're saying, and it really resonates you know, not only in a trainer um, scenario, for sure, like you guys said, but as I remember, like searching for leads when I start, first started and that like, it was like kind of nostalgic and stuff because they had to do a lot of the same stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, it was great. And I actually just finished the last day yesterday. So I kind of just got the info about the uh, coaching course you guys are doing too. So that sounds pretty exciting down the road also. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> All you. right. Thank you guys so much. This Thank is you. awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. You, you know, what's funny is, uh, so I, I have two, one, three and one and one, one, right. And my brother and my cousin were right behind me. So they, they both have a kid, you know, toddler and then their wives were pregnant. And then we'd go to family parties and they'd look at me like, so, you know, what's it like, bro? And I'm like, you guys have no idea. You just wait, bro. Like you have a toddler's heart and then you got a baby and they're like, oh, what's, you know, whatever you divide and conquer. You, know, you, do, you just work. It's not that big of a deal. I'm like, you guys have, sure enough, bro, they don't have kids. I'm getting text messages from the, my cousin's like, 
I don't know if we could do it, bro. This guy bags into their yeah. eyes. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I could do it. My other, my, my brother's like, bro, this is ridiculous. This is, he's like, it's like, how do we people even function? How did mom do it with four kids? I'm like, I don't know how she did it. I don't understand what they did. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's really, really hard. And then lack of sleep on top of it. Forget about it. Well, I hope she takes the advice. And I, I think that the, I think the biggest thing that gets us in trouble, and I feel like this was the last caller too, is the all or nothing mentality yep. where it's like, You'd be so surprised if you just, hey, it's okay. You maybe only worked out three of those, you yeah. know, five or six days this week. And it's okay that you, you know, didn't uh, do as much as you did the previous it week. It is not a waste of time. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not at all. And it's the it's the falling off the wagon and going completely off the rails in yes. the other direction. That's what kills us. And so hopefully she takes the advice, follows the MAPS 15, and we see her in there. Totally. I, I've heard this. This is my favorite thing. What's it like having two kids under three and it's like uh, you're in a boat, it's on fire, and you're holding a baby, and then someone throws you another baby. That's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Our next caller is Matt from Maryland. Matt, what's up, man? What up, Matt? How can I help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I listen to you guys all the time at work. Um, I was watching a one of your clips. Uh, it was a few weeks ago, and you were you had, you had brought on somebody, and you were talking about um, the, the benefits of eating whole whole food protein versus um uh whey protein powder and my question and i think you guys were more uh talking about like the uh, the satiating effect of it instead of like the nutritional value um but i was wondering if because what i do is i put protein um pudding mix in my protein and it kind of thickens it up and it makes it like really filling um is there another benefit of eating whole food protein um outside of like the satiating effect of um like eating protein or is that is that good like um to, to eat protein because it's it's really tough for me to get my protein um because so i'm about 190 pounds so i try to get about 150 to 170 grams of protein but it's really hard uh especially with two kids getting you know, chicken breast, chicken thighs, you know, it, it's a lot of food. So I, I prefer to, the, the protein powder. Um, so is using pudding mix that really thickens it up. Is that, is that good to get my protein? I mean, is there, it, cause there's a lot of nutrients in protein powder. So, um, is, is that a good route to go? Matt, what's your goal? I'm, I'm trying to, I want to get down to about 160 to 170. I'm 510. Um, so I, you know, I don't want to get like super big. Um, like I said, right now I'm about 190, 200. I've, been, I've lost about 10, 15 pounds in a couple months. Um, I, ha I have a treadmill at work and I have a standing desk. So I do a lot of walking. Um, I try to lift three or four times a week. Um, so, so that's where I'm at right now, but I'm trying to get down to 160, 170. I'm trying to get, trying to lean down right now. And then when I lose the, the body fat, then I want to go through like a, a bulk stage. And maybe get up to 170, 180. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I'm at right now. Well, that, that's my goal, the long, long term goal. And I, I don't need to, like, I'm not on a time schedule. Like, it could happen a year, two years. Like, I don't need it, like, you know, by March or April. Yeah. The, the context matters here, right? So, if it's the difference between you missing protein targets and you hitting them, then go for it. Uh, if, if it's the difference between, well, I could do Whole Foods or I could do this this supplement. Which one's better? We're going to point to Whole Foods. Now, why are Whole Foods better? They are more satiating, although you're talking about protein pudding, which uses casein. Casein is a very satiety-producing form of protein. Yeah. Uh, collagen is would be the other, the other one. Um, so they, they're more effective at producing satiety than, let's say, whey. Okay? Um, right. But, you know, Whole, food, whole Foods have cofactors and combinations of nutrients and the whole food is what our bodies evolved mm. consuming. In fact, mm. we, we still to this day discover new things that are in whole foods. Yeah, we don't even know yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. So digestive timing with it. It's know, just, you know, the way it digests, the body breaks it down, the enzymes required. So it's just always going to be a little bit better. Now is a protein powder or pudding bad for you? No. If it's going to help you hit your protein targets and you won't hit yeah. your protein targets if you don't eat them, it's better to have them than in that case. So if you're telling me like it ain't going to happen consistently with food, uh, then what do you think about the shakes and the, and the pudding? Then I'd say go for it. No problem. Because yeah, right now I'm, I'm probably, I can get easily 100, 
125 grams from, I mean, I do eat uh, thighs. Um, the chicken breast, uh, you know, tends to be a little bit too dry for right. me. Um, but getting that extra 50, sometimes 100 grams, it's just easier for me to, you know, th throw three or four scoops. And I, I use true protein, which is like, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's a mix between, it's like 35% uh, casein. Yeah you know, 20, 30% whey, and then the rest egg protein. So it, it has that uh, thickness to it. Um, but I mean, I, I make it, I, I, I put, a, um, I put a little bit less milk in there, which actually really thickens it. And, um, I mean, it, I can actually eat it over two meals and it's pretty, it keeps me full for a long period of time. Yeah. You're fine. I mean, do you like cottage cheese? No, no. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say <laughs> no. that's, that's what's, nature's nature's, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm always trying to get my clients to do this through whole foods. I mean, and then we use the shakes as like the emergency thing. It's that if I can't, if I can't hit it, then I'm going to use it to Sal's original point, which is, you know, are you better off, uh, you know, not hitting your, your protein goals and just, just to skip the, no, of course not. Like I, I want you, but if you got yourself in a place where you're barely getting your 190, you're barely getting 150 to 170. And that that's you taking in a protein shake, of I don't know how many grams of protein were. So now almost almost half or a third of your your protein is coming from a protein shake. I if you're a client, I'm really pushing you in the direction of try we have to let's figure out some other ways to go through Whole Foods. And I would probably first look mm -hmm. at breakfast, since this uh -huh. is normally the the more challenging place for people to do it. I my clients that always struggled with hitting this number of, of grams of protein was because they had either no breakfast, they had coffee and a donut for breakfast, they had just oatmeal for breakfast. They had these breakfasts that had like no protein or or they have four eggs and they think that's a high protein. That's super low in protein. Like yeah. finding a breakfast that is higher in protein is one of the best strategies you can to set, set your day in the right direction. And I think there's value in us figuring that out versus just defaulting to, oh, I can't hit 150. I can't get there without shakes. I'm just going to always do shakes. I'm, yeah. I would be working with you to like, let's let's find some some places that we can start to change some habits and behaviors. My favorite go-to, I've talked about it many times on here, is whatever you have for dinner, because most people make like a, a, a meat and a starch or carb for, for dinner, is double the size and, you know, throw some eggs and cheese on it in the morning. Yeah. So it's yeah. quick, you know, throw it in an iron skillet. Don't even do anything fancy with it and mm -hmm. just drop three or four eggs on top of it and sprinkle some cheese on it. Take you five minutes because you're just heating it up basically and cooking the eggs. Yeah. And now you got this. Ground beef's amazing. Yeah, you got too. this 40, 50 yeah. gram scramble in, in the morning. And if you want to wrap it up in a tortilla to make like a, whatever, you know, whatever will get you to do it consistently and start your day off with then you're at 40 50 grams of protein right there and then all i really need you to do is get two more meals or you're getting 40 50 grams of protein and now we're getting most of this through whole foods versus defaulting to like i only do this and so you have to do the shakes all the time also keep in mind okay and even though i don't have the anything to prove this to you that this this company is doing this but it's in the 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 supplement company's best interest especially the one that is selling protein to push the limits of saying that we have this much protein in it when it really only has this much protein and we're this low a calorie when it only has this many calories, meaning they can be off by 20 to 30% on their FDA. I think the FDA says 20, right? Isn't yeah. that the standard? Mm -hmm. Yes. FDA oh, allow I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, FDA allows them to do that. And think about it. You're in the business of you know selling protein. Bro, that's, that Higher is always it, better to That market. means if it says 40 yeah. grams, it could have 32. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, we yeah. can have less protein than what we're saying. It's not as good as whole foods. You're also low as it is. Like, yeah, I just, I, I, even though it's okay, it's better than not doing it. I'm not, I'm not hammering protein shakes. We all use them in here. I just, if you're my client, I'm really trying to solve where, why can't we get this through whole foods and finding ways to, to incorporate it in your diet? I mean, that was, this is what I would be pushing you to do. Okay. And does that, does that same uh, logic apply for like, um, for quest bars? Cause I do eat a yeah, lot of quest bars, but I, I load up on them sometimes and, you know, I can have three or four a day. And when you're talking yeah. about that many, you're talking about getting, yep. you know, yeah, 50, 60, same. 70 grams of uh, dietary fiber. And yep. sometimes that could be too much. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's the, yeah, it's the same thing. Yep. I look, look, processed foods. When we talk about processed foods, that includes the foods in the supplement and fitness industry. A bar, mm -hmm. you know, your 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 birthday cake flavored Quest bar is not a food that exists in nature. It's been highly engineered. 
Um, all these things are engineered foods, right? So, um, you know, they fall into that same category. Now they tend to be better than, you know, a Snickers bar, although sometimes they're not. Um, but yeah, always, always try to do it through whole natural foods. But if it's the difference between you consistently missing protein and you hitting protein, then go for it. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Matt, are you following a maps program right now? I'm sorry. What are you what following program? a maps for one of our workout programs? Are you, what do you, how are you train? No, no, not, not right now. Uh, do you have any or no? Um, no. Are, are you talking about like a lifting program? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. No. Um, Lifting wise, I've always, I, ha I have the FitBot app that, you know, creates workouts for you, but, um, that's, that's always been like my, my weaker points is like the lifting part. Um, you know, find, especially now I have two kids under three, it's finding time to lift. Um, sometimes I lift, um, in the morning when I work at, or when I wake up, um, and then I'll eat a couple hours later. Uh, sometimes I lift at lunch. It's just finding time, but you know, I used to lift five, six days a week. Now it's, I, I try to stick to maybe one full body a week and then, um, like a upper lower uh, split on the weekend. Oh, um, well, if you could do, what, if you, you could do at least two or three workouts, we'll just send you maps anabolic. What, what kind of equipment you have at your house and, and where you go? Yeah. So I work at, I have a gym membership, but I also, I mean, I, I mainly work out in my garage. I got a, a bench. Um, I got a couple of treadmills. I got the, um, Bowflex adjustable dumbbells that you can actually, you know, uh -huh. set from uh -huh. five pounds to a hundred pounds. I've got, um, a bar. I, I got a lot of, I mean, I've got a, um, a pull up chin up bar. Um, so I got, I mean, I've got, I've got it all. <laughs> do you have okay. a squat rack? Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Oh yeah. Maps anabolic. Follow that program. We'll send it okay. to you. You could do two days a week on it. Two days a week, full body. And th that program will blow away whatever the... Do that. Work on getting a high-protein breakfast. Just Let's just stick to those, those two things. Two things. You'll, those see two, some, you'll, you'll see, see some good movement. results. Yeah. And that, that, that program's on your website? No, no, no. We're going to send it to yeah, you. Oh, okay. Get okay. our email, yeah. Even though the money you're going to save from not buying Quest Bars would well <laughs> totally pay for the program. <laughs> we'll send it to you for free. Yeah, because yeah, they, they get expensive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's do. right. They do. Just do those two things, okay, right for now. And then we could we could talk later. Like, just follow Maps and a ball the way it's laid out and make a okay. conscious effort to do what I said for breakfast, okay? Do those things and don't, and I mean, and still have your protein shake if you need it, but do right. those things alone and just let's watch and see what happens. Yep. Okay, sounds good. I appreciate it, fellas. All right, man. All right, bye. Here, here's how. Uh, so I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel massive frustration because this just illustrates just how shitty our our space is. People are willing, and the, the data will show this. The numbers show us they're so willing to spend hundreds of dollars on worthless supplements. And I say worthless because whole natural foods will crush them. There's, I understand there's value. We sell supplements too. We work with sponsors, but they would spend. He spent thousands of dollars on Quest Bars if he's eating three or four a day and he hasn't bought a fucking workout program, which will blow those Quest Bars away in yeah. terms of results. And you buy it once, you never spend another dollar on it yeah. again. It's yeah. insane to me. And it's a distorted, it's because our space is completely distorted what's truly valuable and what's not valuable. Everybody thinks supplements are so valuable when in fact it's the programming is one of the most valuable things you could do. Yeah. And I just don't, I mean, it like, I know what we were saying originally was, but the reason why I went the direction I was is because I would never let a client just like, oh, yeah. give up. We'll never get just a dismiss it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like okay, let, let me let let me pry in a little bit more. Like, what's lunch look like? What's dinner look yeah. like? What are your serving size? What choices do you go and like? Because that, you want to get to a place where you could get what your body needs nutritionally through whole foods. Mm -hmm. And now I love supplements. I love bars and shakes for. The, the, you know, one-off situation or the occasion that you're on the go or, oh man, I just didn't get a chance to do that. But we want to get to the place where we train ourselves to be able to feed our body what it needs, especially if we're trying to build muscle or lose body fat, like totally. give yeah. it what it needs naturally first. And then of course, then we can make adjustments and pivots when we have to, but you just don't want to just give up on the fact, oh, I just can't do it. I'll just, yeah. I'll, I'm just going to have four birthday cake bars and a, and a way shake every single night. It's like, ah, oh, that's just... You're not gonna. You're not gonna see the results that you want to see going that way. Our next caller is Lauren from Texas. Hey, Lauren, how can we help you? Hi. Hi. Um, okay, so I have a three-part question. Um, I sent an email back at the end of October, and then I decided to get my blood work done because I sent that email. 
because I thought y'all might say to go get it checked out. Okay. So then I got it checked out and my blood work was horrible. So then I sent another email asking about how to work out with all those hormone issues. Okay. Um, and then, but then I actually got my blood work redone last week. And so now I have updated hormone levels. Okay. So, um, so first, um, I sent a picture in and for my first question is my arm fat is ridiculous and I need to figure out how to get rid of it. Um, and then the second one is I'm thinking that my muscle is more like ribeye muscle, like from Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. And I need to figure out how to make it more fillet muscle. Does that make sense? Y'all yes. remember that episode? Yeah, yeah we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and then my new blood work, um, my first hormone levels, my progesterone wasn't registering, but now they are, they're normal. But now my testosterone is not registering. So now my testosterone is like zero. Okay. All right. So what does your workout look? So I, when, when Doug, pull up her email, if you don't mind. So <clears throat> I teach group fitness classes two days a week. I teach a cardio class called high fitness. Oh boy. And then I teach a my own strength format that I call Simply Strength. So I do that back to back on Tuesday, Thursday. Um, when I sent the email, I was lifting full body Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But um, if you have the email from November, the second one, you'll notice that we had a pretty big, significant change in our life. So um, I now have to work part time. Um, so now I'm bartending during the day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, pretty much. Okay. Um, so on top of just in the email, all of my family chaos that's detailed in there. No yeah, worry. Ki okay. Kids, family stuff, working full time, teaching two cardio type classes per week and then train. Yeah. And, and our hormones are off. Yeah. Your, your, your blood work is indicative of you're doing too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as your, <laughs> yeah. Now your the classes you're teaching. Are you doing the workouts with the, with the group? Um, high fitness, I am. Um, that's. Um, it's not like Zumba because it's not dancey. I mean, it's got burpees, tuck jumps, yeah. jumping jacks. Stop, oh, yeah, stop, yeah. stop doing them. Stop. No. Yes. Yeah. Listen to me. Uh, this is what is, what you're, all you're, this is killing you. You're, okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. You, okay. you are you're everything. All those classes that you're doing when you're doing the workout, you are not helping yourself with your fitness goals. If anything, you're hurting yourself, especially with the accumulated stress. Here's what you need to do. Teach those classes, but just teach them. Just walk around and instruct them. Do not do the workouts. That's number one. Number two, lift weights twice a week, full body. That's it. Focus on getting stronger. As far as the 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 body fat on the arms is concerned, as you get leaner overall, those will also get leaner. So yeah. wherever your body stores body fat is where it stores it. As you get leaner, then your body will burn it as your genetics determined. So the, typically the first place you gain body fat is the last place you lose it. But there is no magic like spot reducing method for choosing an area to burn body fat from, uh, and, and then, and then doing it that way. So yeah, you got to lift weights twice a week. Like, a, like you're trying to get strong. We will radically shift the body fat percentage and your hormones. If you literally do just what he said, which is cut out the doing the classes full body. So we'll do maps and a bulk. We'll send to you. Also, the one thing I add to that hit your protein and take every day. That's right. Do you it's, know how many grams yes, of protein? I do that. Now? Okay. Yes. That, that was in the email. On the days that I teach, I aim for 150. And then on the days that I don't teach, I try and do 120 because my goal is to be down to 125. Okay. Um, I'm down to 133 now. I did an in-body scan yesterday. Um, so I'm down to 133. I have anabolic. Um, with my new work schedule, though, I'm not sure. So high fitness, I have to, like, unless I just let that class completely go, I have to teach that with them because it's choreographed. Like every song has its own choreography. Um, my strength class, I, I can, I don't typically do it cause I have 30 plus people in my class. So I like do like the first two reps and then walk around and check form. So um, fine. wait, 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 hold on. So the high fitness, let me, let me, let me picture this real quick. Cause you might be able to. So high fitness you're doing, like you're moving from one movement to another type of deal. Yeah. So like every six, like every 16 counts is a different move. Okay. So do the first kind of one, yeah, do the first one or two counts. stand up. And then keep going, keep yeah. going. All right, ready? We're going to switch to this. And then do one or two and then get up. Literally minimize the amount of the workout. Yeah. That is a garbage workout yeah. that is going to encourage fat storage and encourage muscle pare down. 
which is what's killing you on top of all the stress. So you yeah. need to do, you need a minimal, like minimal workout during that class. Okay. And then if you want to do any activity walking, don't do cardio, don't go running, don't do that stuff. Cause oh, no, no, okay. no, no, no. Yeah. Okay, no, good. the high, the two high fitness classes I teach, those are the only cardio I do. Okay. Do you know what you are? Like, except for like walking and you know, when I'm bartending, when I'm at the bar, I get like 15,000 plus steps. In yeah. Day. Good. And do you but know, that's just walking. Do you know how many calories you're burning at maintenance? Um, burning. No, oh, but like whatever your goal, basal. Metabolic, what, yeah, what do you eat every day? Like what's your maintenance calories? Sorry. Uh, my maintenance, if I wanted to maintain when I sent the email, um, I think it was 143. Pound, 143 pounds and my maintenance was like 2000. Mm -hmm. So I've tried it, but I know I have like a ton of body fat to lose. So you can see. Um, so now I'm at like 1800. I didn't want to drop it too low because then I need, if I want to build muscle, you know, like right now I can only deadlift 170 and I want to get it up to 300 this year. Like that's my goal. Wow. Is that, do you think that's reasonable? 300 pound deadlift for a female at your size is um, like, the, that's ungodly. I mean, I, li I like it amazing. as a goal. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah I think two, okay. I think 230 is reasonable. Yeah, we'd need to rack. Yeah. Dead, dead deadlift, deadlifting is my jam. Like, that's where I want. Yeah, 170 is amazing. <laughs> yeah, you're already pretty strong. You're already killing. impossible. Yeah, we have to oh, rack okay. and shift yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, I, I, you got to, you got to just focus on getting stronger. I would not cut your calories. Yeah, I, I also want to point out something else because I've heard you say it multiple times already, continuing to reference your weight. I don't give a shit about your weight. So I actually would want you probably not to weigh on the scale during this process. I know in your head you have this pound that you want to be at weight-wise. You need to get rid mm -hmm. of the scale. Well, let me ask you this. Here's mm. I'm going to just just to support Adam, or maybe not. I don't know. How do you feel when you get on the scale and you gain a pound? I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. It ruins your whole day. It makes me mad. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. okay with it, but no, you need to get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah, you need to get rid of it right now. It's it's affecting your behaviors, and you're gonna do yeah. the over, in the trash. You're gonna overcorrect or whatever, just because the scale shows you hold a pound of water or, or whatever. Take the scale, throw it out. Don't weigh yourself for probably 90 days. Don't cut your calories. Only pay attention to your strength in the gym. Try and get stronger in the gym. Hit your protein targets and don't do your classes when you're teaching them. And then slowly but surely, your metabolism is going to start to move in the right direction. And then the fat loss will get a lot easier. What you're doing right now, if we don't stop this train, you're on the road to unsustainability. You're going to be on the road towards this is going to feel more than impossible. You're already close there. You're doing yeah. 1,800 calories and you're doing 15,000 steps a day and you're doing some sort of a workout five days a week. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's way, way, your way bo too Your low. body is resistant. Less the typical white woman. Uh, yes, you, you are right. You're <laughs> like, right. Let's be honest here. Yes. I'm no, so I appreciate, and I appreciate that self-awareness <laughs> because this is, I mean, this is like, well, this is so common. It's so common that we get ourselves in this position, but, and the, and the blood work, it's telling you, I mean, the, and then you add in the fact that when you do all this and then the hormones are out of balance like that, then all, nothing you're doing is, is yeah. you're not getting Nothing's any reward. You. You're not getting any reward for all the work you're doing. You're, you're just, little, you're, you're really treading water. Yeah. You're, you're just teaching, treading water. You're teaching your body to learn how to burn less calories. The, everything you're doing right now is teaching your body to burn less calories and how to store body fat more effectively. You're literally strengthening your body's ability to hold on to body fat right now. We got to reverse course. Don't weigh, do okay. not, do not weigh yourself for 90 days. Get out of that. 90 days. 90 days. It's going to mess up. It's going to mess with you. I'm going to put her in the forum so we can yeah. keep an eye on That's you. It. And, and listen. And yell at you once a week. Listen. <laughs> we'll get an army to. to I'm talk used to being yelled at. No, <laughs> no, no. Listen, <laughs> Lauren, listen. I, yes. I you, We've seen this so many times, which also makes us feel very confident that you'll reverse out of this if you do what we say, and you're going to be blown away at how your body responds. So we've seen this so many I know We know yeah. exactly what's going to happen if you do what we say. And what's going to happen is you're going to get stronger, and slowly you're going to start to see and feel fat, uh, fat come off your body, and then you're going to get that snowball effect. And then by the end of this, if you do this well and consistently, you're going to eat more at the end of it while you're leaner than you are now. So we're going to put you in a sustainable place, but the the path you're on now is is the path towards unsustainability and impossibility. We even know what the hurdles are going to be, which is why I'm telling you to throw the scale away. Yeah. Because I know that if if you do what I tell you to do, there's a very good chance we might go up three to five pounds in the next thirty days. I, but I don't give a shit about that. What I care about is hearing from you how you how you feel 
and if you're getting stronger. Like that's what I want to be able to do. I want to yeah. be able to lean into that 300 pound goal. Like re try, really re try to get. Yes, it. I love. That's why I like it as a goal. I think regardless if it's a, a lofty one, I don't give a shit. Stay yeah. focused on Strength, that. Like, we least. are trying to get strong in the gym. We're trying to lift heavy weights, and we're going to hit that protein intake. We're going to reduce amount of cardio stuff that you're doing. And just and pay attention build to how you your feel. metabolism. That's pay what we're doing. Pay attention to your energy, your mood, your sleep, your libido. Like all those things are going to start to improve before you see any visible aesthetic changes. Those all those things will start to move in the right direction. It'll help. And it'll happen though, Lauren. Trust the process. Okay. We're gonna. Put I you knew y'all were gonna say all of that. I just didn't <laughs> want to accept it. That's why I'm putting you in the forum, and that's not to yell at you, but to no. encourage you as you go through. The no, process. I know. Okay. This I, is love. So you know, accept it. With anabolic, though, I already own anabolic. I own like 13 y'all's programs. I have a lot. Right. Um, I'm just not sure. Like that. That's not going to be too much with working too. Like with bartending. Two, two no, days. No, two, no, two days a week. There's a two day version. Just, in there. Two, just yeah, to do yeah. the okay. two day. Yeah, do the two day version. You're fine. The other option, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll, if you don't have it, we'll send it to you. Do you have Maps 15? Yeah, I do. I that's what I've been doing is the Maps 15 okay. advanced. That's what I've been doing yeah. before I go into work. So like I'll teach Tuesday, Thursday, then Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't have to go in until 10. Mm -hmm. So I would go and do like two or three lifts. Like sometimes I combine them a little bit. Okay. Um, and do two or three lifts and then go to the okay. gym or okay. then go to work. Yeah, no, you, you'll, you'll be good. Just fall, do what we say. You're going to, you're going to feel, you're going to feel real good. Okay. All right. All right. Better say Thank hi, you guys. say hi in the forum. Okay. I want to check in from you this week. Just letting us know that you started the process. Okay. All right. Lauren. All right. Okay, you fine. got this. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. All right, bye. Bye. Thanks, Thank Lauren. you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, it's, uh, uh, Group X instructors or group exercise instructors, they the ones that struggle, I, I, it's like clockwork. They do the workout with their class. Yep. It's like, oh, no, I don't do all that stuff. It's like, well, what about your class? Well, yeah, I got to teach them. I got to follow along the workout. I got to do it. It's like you're doing a bunch of non-effective workouts for the goals that you have. I mean, Stop these are those. these are my favorite clients. I mean, one, she's right. It's very, very common. But I mean, you you radically change this person's life when you get them to p figure this out because mm -hmm. oh, it just feels the like amount, it, it the amount of work and effort that she is putting for she yeah. is hitting her protein intake yeah. every day. She's training five days a week. She's teaching two cardio classes. She's getting fifteen thousand yeah. steps. She's working. She's l raising kids. I mean, she's fucking doing it all, mm -hmm. but not getting any of the benefits of it because it's too much. Overdoing mm -hmm. all of it while also under eating, and you just need to get to a place she's spinning the dirt real fast. Yeah. And it, if we do this right, she wants to do any of those cardio classes. She'll have to lift two times. A week, she'll get stronger. She'll be able to eat more calories. She'll be leaning out and tightening up like she wants to. Like, it's it's there, Lauren, but you just got to trust the process and throw the fucking scale away. Do it. Look, if you're a trainer or coach, we have a course that teaches you how to build your business. MindPumpFitnessCoaching.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at MindPumpJustin. I'm on Instagram at MindPumpDeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam. Adam.